and we're live. That was quick. <laughs> Just put it in the chat. Welcome, welcome everyone to the Blue Talks Flip Your Script Experience Virtual Platform Stage. I'm super excited to be here. I am, my name is Elise Rothman. I am the founder of Flip Your Script Coaching, and I have had the honor of partnering with Corey Poirier, the founder of Blue Talks, to create this stage for you. And we are in the middle of, we're coming to the end of uh, one of our week-long virtual events. So as a Flip Your Script coach, I help people recognize, release, and restore at the root of their belief system so they can become the creative director of their own life. I am super excited to be here today uh, with Deborah as our co-host, Deborah Hollick as our co-host and Kira down below. She's our first guest of the day. I am, I just wanna plant a little seed for all of those that are listening today and those of you who are watching our replay, what it means to flip your script. So our reality that we live in is formed by a perspective, okay? So our perspective forms our reality. The beautiful thing about that is it only takes one thought to shift our perspective and in turn our entire reality changes. Sounds a bit magical, and it is. However, we were, we were born with all the tools that we need uh, to be able to be the creator of the life that we live. We are the star of every scene in our show, right? We are the star. All three of us here today right now are the star of our own show and are living our own reality. And if you don't like how you're showing up, who you are and how you're being in the scene of your show and you don't even like the scene that you're in, you have every opportunity to create a new scene and to show up as a different version of you as the star of your show. And so today we have four beautiful guests that we're gonna be interviewing and they're gonna help us shift our perspective by sharing their story and sharing with us how they have stepped up in their own world to help others be able to flip their script and live and grow the life that they love. So welcome, welcome, I'm super excited, day four. Deborah, yes. it's a pleasure. It's, it's Deborah and I are meeting for the first time today. <laughs> so I'm excited to learn a little bit more about you and how you ended up here on the Blue Talks stage and just a little bit about your background and what inspired you to show up for yourself and for those that you are helping show up in their own lives. Thank you, Elise. I'm very honored to be here today, and I really appreciate uh, Corey and you uh, offering me to be the co-host. And uh, I, I do a few things. Uh, how did I end up being on uh, Blue Talks? Well, I am in book three, and my chapter is called "Listen to the Whispers or Get the Two by Four." And I am pretty much an expert on how the two by four can feel like metaphorically speaking. So <laughs> that's one of the things that I like to share with people. And I, 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 what a, I help professionals uh, uh, smash confusion, stop cha uh, um, solve chaos and stop cussing. That's part of what I do as well with my coaching and consulting. So I do that and uh, I'm very honored to be here. I, I've been, it's been a while since I've been uh, speaking on stage. I Many, many years ago, I was doing that and then switched off into my marketing business, which of course, I still was speaking and training and doing those things. But it uh, it's exciting to be back with people in this kind of a setting. I, I'm so glad that we have technology now that we can do these things. Imagine where we'd be the last couple of years if we didn't. So uh, yeah, that's how I ended up here. And I'm very honored. Oh, well, I'm glad that you're here too. Thank you. So we're going to get to spend a few hours together. So we'll learn, trust me, we're going to learn a lot more about each other in these few <laughs> hours. <laughs> and so for our first guest is Kira Schindel. Is that how you say your last name? That's correct. Yep. Well, welcome, Kira. We're super excited to have you here today. And again, first time we're meeting. And I love that. You know, I do pop on to people's social media and websites to get a taste. But, you know, sometimes it's just really nice to just be like, hey, we just met and have an, have an open, honest conversation. I'm a freestyle speaker. I'll get on stage and I improv and freestyle. I'm not a create the script and study it and, and, and learn that kind of thing, because I feel like everybody deserves to have a firsthand experience. And that's what this stage is really about. It's about for us having a first time experience and also providing our viewers for that authenticity and that authentic experience as well. So 
So what, so I just want to know, where are we speaking to you from? Yeah, so I am currently in the Edmonton, Alberta area, just in a just outside of Spruce Grove. Um, but when you where when you ask where am I speaking from, as of May, I'll actually be in the UK. So <laughs> kind of a little bit of a move coming up here. But uh, yeah, really, really happy to be here. And thank you so much for having me. And I just want to say it, it really like warms my heart that there's people like you, Elise and Deborah, doing the work to help people not only live into like their authenticity, but at least when you mentioned like we are the stars of our own show like Deborah she's in volume three I'm in volume five and my whole uh chapter was about you are the like for me it was like the leading lady of your life but you are the star of your own show so that just really resonated with me I love being in this space already because you two are just totally my vibe so I'm here for it <laughs> oh my god and I love that you said vibe I don't know if you heard yesterday but it's really all about the vibe whatever views we have whatever whatever we've cluttered our perspective with it's really how we show up in the vibe that we show up with but Deborah, I didn't even ask you where where are you from where are we speaking to you from I'm from High River, Alberta, so I'm in Alberta, right along with Kiara. We're a few hours apart. I'm hoping we're going to. I'm going to see you next week at the Blue Talks Alberta event. So I hope we're going to see you there. Oh, I'm that's exciting! As well, and I'm I'm really lucky because uh, I, I I'm. This is not the first time that I've met Kiara. Uh, we've been in in Corey's group together in the speaking boot camp, and we got to share some time in one of the breakout rooms. So I'm really thrilled to to be with her again and uh, of course with you ladies and well, may um, I mention one sure. thing you know when you yeah. mentioned about how you know we're the stars of our life and you know we need to flip the script and change things I just posted on my my Facebook page it's uh, Smash Sue Mentor uh, that uh, today I, I, it was a repost and it said you know life is like a flat tire if you don't change it you're not going anywhere <laughs> or very far and exactly. is that not true Oh, it's so true. And you know, we, I mean, stars can be the victims, stars could be the heroes, stars, you know, when we watch a movie, stars have all different characteristics, right? And they have all different vibes going on. So, you know, we're the star, but we could still be the victim, you know, or we could still be in the I'm not enough or, you know, whatever it is that's holding us back, or we can own it. I, I'm all about, it's your life, own it. And it's not, a, it's simple, it's simple, but it's not easy. So Kira, how do you show up in the world right now? And what, well, let, let me ask you this. So what brought you to the Blue Talk stage? Because there's always a story behind how we end up here. Like Corey and I met at a Hay, a Hay House event in Orlando. <laughs> that was our story. But what, how did you end up here? And what inspired you to, to show up in the world as you are? Yeah, so I found Corey through one of my mentors, Rosalind Fung, and she's been just such a godsend to be in my life. Um, so I've worked with Corey in the uh, one of the books and have plans for future books as well. And what really resonated with me about Corey is just how genuine he is. Like he really goes out of his way to care about people. And that's something that I think is sometimes missed in business where it's not about being the nice guy or the nice girl. That's a really key part of my story where I was always the nice girl and I just felt like I was being suffocated because it's like, I'm being nice, I'm being nice, I'm being nice. And that was a program that was like implanted in me. But really when I was able to take that out and switch to, hey, I can be kind and kindness has boundaries and it also has that caring and like encompassing feeling that just resonated more with me about like standing in your power and still caring about people, but not giving everything away so that you don't have anything left for yourself. So I think that's something that resonates just about how Corey shows up in the world. So when I got the opportunity to work with him in one of the books, and then he shared that he also does a speaker series as well, I was like, okay, a book, a book is good. Like we're, we can do that. But I've really had that push in the last year to be like, well, when you work with people, you tell them to show up authentically. And one of the things that I knew was next for me was doing more speaking and having my voice actually heard rather than just being like a, a, a background character, because it was a little bit of a hypocritical thing to be like, oh, no, I'm doing this for everybody. And I like I light up when I work with people. On the other side, it's also an and of like, and my voice can do more work as well. So a little bit of a push and just, yeah, like so happy to be here and, and have the opportunity. So. Well, I could just tell you right now that you are already a speaker. Oh, that thank you. That was eloquently shared. <laughs> I don't know if that was something that you scripted or it was just right from the heart, but you got it. Well, thank you. you. That it. means a lot. 
And I think it's really important um, to recognize that there's a difference between being kind, right? And, and giving yourself away and showing up empty. Absolutely. Right. And so to be able to, I'm not sure how old you are, but. I'm 32 you, as of Thursday. Oh, well, happy, happy birthday. Happy almost birthday. Well, it's a huge, that is like something, it's so huge to have that awareness at your age because it's going to take you far. Because kind, we, we're always like hashtag kindness matters and kindness rules. <laughs> However, is it authentically kind? Right. And and sometimes with that authentic kindness as well, it's knowing that you're not sugarcoating stuff. It really is coming from a place of I, and this is not like a me thing, but I, whoever's listening, watching, watching is able to say things that may not um, have that like fluffiness around it, but it's still, it's still coming from the heart. That's at the end of the day, what it means for me to be kind is that it's, it's genuinely coming from the heart and you're, you're wanting to help people and, also know that you can have a you need to have a full cup as well before you can even be like oh here's your little couple dribbles like that's all I have left like that's not actually serving anybody so yeah. I know that's a kind of worn out saying like fill your own cup first but well and what is your cup full of so a lot of people have full cups but what is it full of oh so true that is yeah game changer right there if you need to play that back listen to what Elise just said what is your cup actually full of like game changer <laughs> we talked about we talked about it yesterday with a couple of our guests and uh we talked about you know when somebody shows up in our life what what how do we show up in response like how are we responding to the mirror that's showing up like are we pissed off are we angry are we frustrated are we sad does it make us insecure nobody puts that in our cup all they're doing is knocking our cup over however they're knocking it over and whatever's coming up it's actually a gift saying oh well that was all right that was still in my cup yeah. Oh my gosh, thank you for letting me know that I'm still, you know, having a moment or I'm still frustrated or I'm still resentful or I'm still really happy. And it doesn't matter that you are who you are <laughs> and it doesn't resonate. So there's so many different, di different things that we can have in our cup. And I think that that holds true for mindset. We all have mindset, but where is our mindset? Absolutely. Yeah. So do you have, do you, Deborah, do you have any questions? I want to bring you in because, you know, I could just chit chat away. <laughs> well, I was just going to comment and say that, you know, why do we put things in our cups or on our plates that we don't like? You go to a, a, a buffet, do you put all the things you don't like on your plate? No, no. I go straight to dessert. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Is that first girl? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong but, with that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, let's, let's, let's really examine what, what we're putting into that cup in the first place and why is it still there? Or how did it get in our cup? Because sometimes it comes from even yes. being in the womb and we don't have a choice that that's in our cup. But Kira, so, so what, so I see that you have your name. Sometimes we'll have the name and what somebody does. So, so how, so, so what, so what's your gig? Yeah, so my <laughs> so eloquent, not so eloquently asked, but what's your gig, girl? Yeah, for sure. So similar to Deborah, there's a lot of modalities and things that I use. So um, I've just like certified as a flourishing life coach. So that was something that was really meaningful to me because in the work that I've done with Reiki and astrology and breath work and meditation, I have all those certifications. I was really finding that it was something that there's moments in that where I am at some point coaching people. So um, it was an opportunity to say, hey, like, let's kind of bring all of these together and have a bit more of a cohesive, like, here you go. Like, let's help. Like, how can I help? and put all of your tools on or a, a toolbox or whatever? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's it's basically the the umbrella. And it's like, OK, well, like, what do you want? How can I help you? And what can we combine to best serve? So, um, yeah, started four years ago with Reiki and really just kind of kept it quiet and word of mouth and like, oh, very still in that working through that nice girl thing of like if you if it, you kind of need reiki or sort of want to know about it like that to two years ago being like okay actually saying that i am an astrologer that i do have different certifications in terms of breath work and meditation and really stepping into my own power and light of being like i can be that weirdo that has a bunch of different things going on and that's okay and also i'm pretty good at like helping people through mm -hmm. stuff so <laughs> right now i'm launching a program that uh 
combines coaching, so one-on-one and group with astrology. So one of the things that we'll be doing is actually taking a look at a birth chart because one of my favorite things to do in the entire world that lights me up is looking at someone's birth chart, inviting them in to say, okay, whatever your intention is from this reading, please, please, please let me know. I want to serve you as best as possible. And also I want you to walk away knowing that you are perfectly amazing exactly as you are because every single person no matter if you look at a birth chart or not will have their gifts and challenges but it's always about the gratitude for the gifts and the remedies for the challenges so that's just something that has really resonated with me over the past two years of serving clients more consistently um so yeah just really really happy to kind of step forward and be like this is kind of a kooky little tool that some people may or may not resonate with and that's fine too like if that's not something that is in your vibe and you're like, oh, astrology is a hoax. Cool. Well, you were born and you do have a sign. So it's really in everyone's, <laughs> it's in everyone's space, whether they, you know, whether you choose to take that as part of one of your signature ingredients, you know, ingredients in your signature dish. That's another thing. But I love that. And, you know, girl, I call it diversified. Oh, so good. <laughs> I love that. You yeah. are diversified. Absolutely. You're diversified. Well, I'm excited. I'm so, so, okay. So who is your, like, do you have a specific clientele? Do you have like a target? Like who do you, who do you resonate with the most as far as like maybe a client is concerned or who would, who would be best, a best, a best fit for your, for your programs? Absolutely. Yeah. So I resonate best with people who maybe they're in a nine to five job and they're like a little bit like, Oh, I don't really know how I, how this fits into my life or if I really like it here. And also it doesn't have to be someone who's like, I'm going to quit my job tomorrow and go be whatever I want to be. I really like working with like the everyday person who's like, I'm just kind of sort of trying to figure out where my, where my place is, how I can really stand up in my life and show up at work, home, family, whatever it may be. Um, so I, I'm not targeting to, I think there's so many beautiful people that I've worked with, like a lot of mentors that do focus on like divine feminine and feminine healing. And that is definitely important. I also just am very open to male and female clients because I know that they're, that masculine and feminine exists in everybody. Um, so that's kind of more the focus that I'm taking. So when I when I do breath work with people and, and do meditation journeys, it's not necessarily focused so much on like female male. It's very much inclusive in terms of having um, really anybody who's able to show up in that in that space feel like they have a safe space to to like discover from. So yeah, I, that's awesome. So wait, so I have a question because I've been asking all of our guests. I'm like, so is there something oh, that we that. can actually interactively share? Like, could you do like a little absolutely? Breath? Or something with us. I'm like, if we're here, so so one of the things I love to do, and I have actually haven't even done it this whole week, is I usually do an like a freestyle tapping because I'm an EFT oh, practitioner. That. So that's really what I bring to the table, an EFT master, and that is the release part of the recognize, release, and restore in people's lives is really getting to the root and pulling out the thought weeds so we can plant these mind seeds and then teach my clients and teach individuals to utilize their awareness, right? And their, and their focus to, to go out and, and, and create. Uh, so, but I haven't done it, but all of our guests have shared. So, or most of them. So what would you, what, what would you choose to share? Yeah. Do you guys want to do like six quick rounds of breath work? Sure. Yeah. That sounds Perfect. great. Okay. Sure. Let's so, do it. <laughs> so, so we had, um, L on and she taught us how to sit properly is okay. that you actually pull your back glutes up so you're actually sitting on your hamstrings and creating that arch in your back and you're actually going to let the abdomen gut hang almost like fall right yep. so I'm just moving my glutes right now so I no I love that I'm so <laughs> hey thank you <laughs> and, and you feel, you'll be able to feel the difference and then you're like sitting almost on your you're sitting on the back of your thighs almost right and having your shoulders out and then the gut letting your gut out whoever told you to let your gut out 
<laughs> and and that's such an interesting thing to say too, because there's a lot of time in in practice and actually in in coaching groups I've been in where uh, actually in, one, in my breathwork training where when we would partner with each other, it's like that reminder. And there's there's a lot of time in North American society, especially with women, where it's like I'm sucking in. So not only are North Americans more likely to breathe just from their chest, so their stomach isn't like they're not breathing from their belly, they're also sucking in their belly. So we're just we're just a whole mishmash of. <laughs> Let's just let everything right. go for a minute. <laughs> yeah. And one of the most interesting things that we learned, she's pressure free living. That's her company. And I can't remember your last name Al, but I have a call. I actually have a call with her today at four. I'm Perfect. super excited. She was so inspiring. But what she said is that when you let that gut out, it's actually letting your body know it's safe. So Cause beautiful. you have that when you're tightening, right. You're, and you're creating that stress, then you're like, you're like triggering that stress hormone. So anyway, that was a little side note. No, I love that. I'm glad. Thank you for the thank you for the setup. Much appreciated. Out. That's the message. <laughs> let you, let you get it. There's a new meaning to let it all hang out. Let it all hang out. Let that muffin top hang right over. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I pulled my leggings down. I'm like, we're out here. So <laughs> let's go. <laughs> you can't even see it on screen, so it doesn't matter. Right? It's like nobody needs to know, but I just told everybody. So whatever. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. So just in this quick, um, I'm sure everybody's familiar or not everybody's familiar necessarily, but one of the most reconnecting breaths is a four, seven, eight breath. So it basically allows you to balance your nervous system pretty quickly within, um, within this like six breath set. So what you're going to be doing is inhaling for four, holding for seven and letting out for the count of eight. Now that can definitely sound like a lot of like, I'm going to have air hunger. And sometimes that can happen. So if that happens, just let it go. Like if you need to be like, Ugh, I've been holding too long. I need that air. Go with what your body is asking for. The whole purpose is just eventually with practice, because this is a practice, you'll be able to inhale for four, hold for seven and let out for eight. So when you're inhaling through your nose, a little trick that I like to use for the hold is to put my tongue either against my teeth or the roof of my mouth, just somewhere in my mouth that I'm like, that's what I'm focusing on. I'm not focusing on the hold within my body. And then when you're blowing out, if you think of blowing through a straw, it just allows your breath to exit more consistently instead of like a sigh where you're like, okay, oh, and you're like, I'm out at three. Like now what do I do? <laughs> right. So, yeah. So I'll cue it and we'll just kind of like settle in a do little I bit. Breathe in through my chest or my gut? So like do I breathe up or do I feel my abdomen? You do want to fill your abdomen. Sometimes that can take a little bit of practice. So if you're finding that your breath is sort of catching in your chest, go with it. It'll like, it'll, as you as you keep doing the round so you might find that find that your first round gets a little bit stuck in your chest by the third round you're able to get into your belly and then the last round that's really what we're aiming for and the six rounds is just a quick so this is what i did before the call to just like get centered be present and not have different things on my mind and be like hey elise and deborah deserve my full attention so this is what we're doing so it was just like that it's a quick exercise that you can do um so i remember <laughs> growing up it was like you go to the bathroom before an interview and do like your power poses so that's it's like a power pose for breath type of thing so <laughs> okay. okay let's yeah, do it perfect. all right so okay. once you've found your kind of grounded seating area is something that supports you and serves you just want to kind of melt into it a little bit and just focus on doing a quick body scan here. Let's just unfurl our brow. It's usually a pretty big tension point for people. Letting your jaw relax as well. Moving down your throat and neck into your shoulders, just rolling those shoulders back so that you know that there's as little tension there as possible, just fully relaxed. And letting your tummy, gut, belly, whatever you wanna label it as, just relax, hang out. Do what it needs to do and just feeling so supported and rooted in where you are sitting right now. So as we arrive in this space, let's just take one big deep breath together. So we'll breathe in through the nose, inhale and exhale. You can let it out with a sigh or through your mouth or nose, whatever just serves you best at this time. All right, so as we breathe in through our nose, we're gonna be inhaling for four, holding for seven, exhaling for eight, remembering that the count can alter based on what you need in this moment. So let's inhale, one, two, three, 
four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and out through that straw, four, five, six, seven, eight. So noticing how that felt, let's breathe in for four. Hold. And out. Smoothly inhaling. One, two, three, four. Hold, tucking your tongue, noticing that you're not paying attention to the hold. And exhale for eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, halfway through, inhale. Hold. Exhale. Inhaling one, two, three, four. Hold two, three, four, five, six, seven, and out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to join you in this last one, no counting. And at the end of that exhale, just return to your normal breath. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. And return to your natural inhale. So it's an opportunity to see any shifts of where you might have been holding things in your body previously. So I tend to have a pretty tight back. Um, but once you allow your breath, especially to get into that belly breath, and then once you're happy with belly breath, you can actually expand your body a little bit more too. That's going to allow for those different um, different notices within your body to kind of come through for you. That was great, Kara. That was really wonderful. Well, oh, thank I, you. Uh, I, breath work is so important. I think people don't realize how Just important it really is. Guys. So, Just read um, battery, so I'm plugging in. Oh, she's <laughs> having battery issues. <laughs> so, uh, so how long have you been doing the breath work? Uh, breath work has been, uh, I've been certified for a year. So, yeah. Yeah, it's something that anytime that I do a uh, full moon meditation, new moon meditation, whatever it may be, I really like having in a meditation journey some connection to breath. Um, I just find it very a really beautiful way to like have an embodiment within what you're experiencing. So it's been, it's been really helpful for me in terms of any time that there is that, um, that little bit of uh, tension or anxiety or just like feeling like ickiness. Like anytime I'm like, Ooh, this is icky. It's like, what can I, what can I go to? That's, I don't want to say a quick fix, but that it allows me to sort of shift like my mindset from something being not, Ser like not of service to like okay let's just like flip our flip our script we'll just in yeah. honor of Elise yeah. flip the script yeah. on the moment <laughs> it's just it's just a recentering right absolutely so. can we go to your Reiki for a few minutes uh, yeah. uh if if you if you're interested I um like to I, I used to do a lot of curlium photography and so that takes pictures of you know what thoughts look like. And I had the opportunity uh, years ago with a Reiki practitioner and a gentleman that actually had cancer and she was working on him and um, there was going to, and I was doing, you know, wanted to see some different modalities. What did people's thoughts look like and how did their energy change that we could actually see it? We can feel it in Reiki and breathing and, you know, we can feel the energy changing and shifts, but what does it look like for people? So I was given the wonderful opportunity by this wonderful gentleman and this Reiki practitioner that I took pictures before of him. And after she immediately following the Reiki treatment of what it was like after, it was astounding. 
the change from the dark to the light to the oh it was just it was just so profound and i'm so honored to have had that opportunity so i wanted to share that with you because sometimes people don't realize that thoughts look like something <laughs> energy looks like something <laughs> Absolutely. Well, first, I would love if you have that series somewhere, I would love to see it or we can connect later as well. Um, but I would that's, that's so stunningly beautiful to have that experience. I mean, I can only imagine how powerful it was for you to be in the moment of like the before and after and seeing what you're what you're photographing, really, but just to have that be able to be presented to the world. Like, one thing with um, one thing with Reiki and energy work. Welcome back, Elise. Thank you. I was like, I should have just, I knew I didn't follow my gut. I wanted that last breath. And <laughs> No, it's all good. <laughs> We're just having a, a quick chat about Reiki. One of the things that I know in my, um, in my training is that it's never used as a diagnosis tool. So when we're in a Reiki session, it's not us saying, oh, there's the, this is happening. Like this is in, in the example that you gave with the photography, this is cancer. Like, could you imagine leaving a session that's supposed to be healing and that be like what the message is? Really, it's just used as a, it's, it can be an encouragement to say, hey, this is what, what we're realizing in the session. You're, and you're, some clients will like to talk through it as you're doing the energy, moving the energy. Some people, I actually am very quiet until something really big comes up. So one of the last sessions that I just had, I was the quiet the whole time. And then she got to my solar plexus and I was just the chattiest Kathy ever. And I was like, clearly this needed to come out. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's really beautiful to see how it's not necessarily a diagnostic tool, but it can be a very healing tool when other things are not necessarily serving the individual. So I just think, Deborah, that's a beautiful experience that you had. And like I said, I'd be more than happy to like share that work or like look at it. I just I, I want to see it for myself because I think that's such a beautiful way to have the energy like displayed and really see the difference. So well, and I missed that part. What do we want to see? Uh, we were talking about uh, Reiki and how, you know, the difference in energy. And I mentioned that uh, I used to do a lot of curling photography, which shows what thoughts and energy looks like. And that's one of the things that I really want to show the world more of. And I was just mentioning to Kiera that um, I had the opportunity to do curling photography on a gentleman that had cancer. And he was about to have a Reiki treatment and gave permission for me to take his picture before and then after immediately following. And the difference in energy was profound. It was just astounding. After immediately and after what? The session his treatment. Oh, his yeah. Treatment. Yeah. His, oh, his, his Reiki treatment. And, it, you know, the, the one thing that was, I think, equally astounding was how his energy even was more after he saw the pictures. You know, I'm not claiming that there was any great, you know, healing magic there, but he felt better just being able to see it. And he said, you know, he just, healing right how, yeah, he just expressed how wonderful it was. And just, you know, it was, it was just, I, I was just really, really honored to have shared that time with the three. And uh, yeah, so that's more of what I want to do. I like to teach, you know, people what thoughts look like. I, you know, I'm, I'm like you, Elise. I'm a big believer that, you know, our thoughts are everything. And, you know, sometimes we get stuck in the quagmire with our st thoughts not being so pretty. But, you know, only we can get out of it. Right. But, and, and you know what, that's really hard too to know that like, like, okay, only I can get out of it, but not knowing how makes it even more difficult, right? Like knowing that, I'm in control and I have the power, right? But just not having the tools to be able to activate that power, that can be a real big challenge. Uh, and I think that the work that we're all doing, right? And the work that coaches and energy healers and I mean, even business coaches and thought leaders, if we're providing tools for individuals to be able to pull from, to be able to activate what we already have. We're not giving somebody anything, just like we're not giving them the insecurities and giving them the stress and giving them the frustration, right? We're providing them a tool so they could now utilize a tool should they choose to be able to start what I say, recognizing, releasing, and then restoring from the inside out. 
But I think it's fascinating because as an EFT practitioner, when I work with my clients, I don't have the skill that you have, Deborah, as far as taking pictures, but I can physically see the shift in my clients. Like physically, I'm like, you need to go look in the mirror right now. Like go look in the mirror. Like right now we cleared whatever that film was because you, your energy is totally different and you have now, you're shining, you're bright. It's so people cool feel it. That, it's so cool to see that like physiological difference too. So like I can only imagine it like when you say like go look in the mirror, if they if they take a picture and I do this before my treatments just from my work and in, in knowledge of knowing that things can look different because sometimes like to Deborah's point like I'm sure that gentleman like obviously felt it but to see it sometimes we're so programmed that like oh see it to believe it even though we know in our body we've experienced it for ourselves but it's just like that that visualization of like oh my gosh so right. when I go in for treatments whether it's Reiki or sh like a shamanic journey or it doesn't really matter what the modality is I'll take a picture of my face and I will be like okay so what changed because that's usually where I, I notice it the most and then secondary like where my shoulder alignment is so if I had if I'm like I'm taking a long enough selfie that I can see my shoulders it's kind of like that like picture frame mm -hmm. of awareness where you're like oh my gosh I actually look different because something has shifted so dramatically even though like the beauty of tapping like I'm obsessed that you Elise that you do that work I mean oh my gosh thank you for <laughs> for guiding well, people through well, that. let's chat let's chat like I will I, I'm more than happy I'm always like you know what if you if you want to work through something just give me a call Love it. So you reach out to me, we'll set something up and we'll work through it because you know what? I, you know, I'm certified, I'm a master. I've had my own experiences as being paralyzed at 18 and using EFT as a tool to heal through anxieties and all of that throughout my life. And, but you know what? Really, the big something and source has been my biggest teacher and my biggest connection. And just from from childhood, I knew, you know, that there that I could tap into something bigger. But using EFT as a tool to help individuals tap into something bigger for themselves is huge. It's huge. And I love it. I love it. I love watching people come in and go, go look in the mirror now. Like, <laughs> go see how you shift in now. You know, like, to me, it's exciting. It lights me up to see other people light up, just like you said too earlier, right? I mean, it's really all about us, isn't it? Like all about us. <laughs> Only us. Come on, Deborah. It's all about <laughs> us. Happier. If we can create, if we can help people be happier, we live in a happier world. I mean, come on. Absolutely. And it's a ripple effect. Yeah. The happier sure. we are, it ripples out. We don't know. You know, when you're happy and you're out and about for instance and you you know you're smiling you're just you don't have to be smiling at anybody or anything but you're mm -hmm. just smiling you're feeling good people i mean it, people just gravitate to you and I, I love it the most when it's kids i i love being in costco or a grocery store and you know before the days of masks and uh being able to you know play with the kids and i i i do it all the time because i'm you know making faces and we're smiling and we're giggling and uh and i was in costco a couple of weeks ago and, and here i am with my mask on and do my thing and and uh I see this little one and the little one's looking at me and there was obviously an energy recognition there. And, and so I'm smiling and, and I'm thinking, Oh, I have a mask on. <laughs> he can't even see. It doesn't matter. It's in the eye. Exactly. Oh, and that's what, the, that's what the mom said. I said, you know, I just wish I could just see, you know, it's so much fun to see their smiles. I wish they could see, you know, mine. And she said, Oh, they know, you know, he knows he can tell by your eyes. She said, and it was just, it was just a really cute thing. And as I was going, he was like looking after me. <laughs> it was so cute. <laughs> Do you, are you married or kids or anything, Kira? I mean, you look so young. I didn't even ask. <laughs> so my fiance and I are uh, getting married in March. So uh, it's March 2023, so a year away. We've had to replan this thing three times. So we're working on it. But um, we did too. My fiance and I did too. Like, this, this, well, and I think, you know, everything happens for a reason though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, it might be external, but still. <laughs> <laughs> But it's funny that Deborah brings up kids because I'm not I've never been a big like kids person like I wasn't I was a good babysitter because I like was good in the diligence of the work but I was just like this is not for me so I've never been a good big kids person but the purest sound of joy that I can describe is like a kid in just laughter and giggling and that like instantly is like if I can 
if I can go outside and be like, I need to not to be like weird, be like, I need to find kids. But if like, as soon as a kid passes, it's like that laughter is just like nothing is wrong with the world. Like it's just the purest sound of joy. So it's just so interesting that you brought that up. Cause I'm like, yeah, like if I'm having a bad day, I'm like, okay, like what funny thing can I find on like YouTube or whatever, if I'm not able to like be out and just be like, yeah, like this is, this is pure joy. So it's just, and like you were saying at least too, it's, it is in the eyes. And I think when people are open to energetics of, of each other and their body and that type of thing, you have that natural like attraction to kind of have more of like a, one of my mentors calls it like flirting with life, like not looking for anything to come out of it, but you're just open and you're like able to just like move through the world in a more like conscious and beautiful way. And so Mm -hmm. that that just reminded me of that. And I just thought that was worth a share of like, just have a little fun with it and like flirt and don't have it like, don't be so stuck in like your, in your ways, like loosen up a little bit. I think we can all loosen up after the last couple of years for sure. (laughs) (laughs) So a couple of things. So we, so my fiance and I bought uh, an old motel with a very seedy reputation here in, in Wikiwachi, Florida, which I didn't even tell everybody where I'm coming to you from and we have children we're so family friendly and we have kids here now and but this morning when i woke up because we're on property um i can't remember his name but anyway he's like six years old and he's this little spitfire he's like why have you been in there so long like i came out of our home right and he's like running around the property because we have a little creative painting station and he like was ready to paint and you know do all this stuff and he goes why have you just been in there so long and like running around and so excited and it was just so adorable like he must have been up since the crack of dawn you know like waiting for us to come out because we sat by the fire last night and we roasted marshmallows and we had a bubble party and we just we're like it's full here of kids and energy and life and really happy vibes and i think that that's really important to create a place where people can come and 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 live their vibe right and so I totally, totally get like the whole kid thing. Um, I forgot the second thing that I was going to say, but it was poignant, but we'll come back to it, I guess, because we were talking about, oh, eyes. So during this pandemic, because I'm a big three second hugger, mm-hmm. I'm always like three second, hu- my son wasn't very like huggy, like as a kid or whatever. Now we could like, he's, he's like the biggest hugger. He's more huggy than I am, but it's always, it was always like a three second hug because that, th- that third second shifts something. Yeah. right there's something about that third second but you can give a three second hug with your eyes if you stare in someone someone's eyes for three seconds that's a three second hug so that has been my three second hug throughout this entire global plot twist mm-hmm. you can do it via zoom you can do it in person try it try the three second eye hug i love it's that a game that's- changer I was just saying that's game changing, like, because it's there, there does feel like there's a lot of like boundaries and restrictions on things, but it's like you, to your point, at least you can always find a way. Like that's the whole thing. You can always find a way. Listen, as a visionary in a world of limitless possibilities, there's always the way. (laughs) (laughs) Always the way. And actually looking at somebody in their eyes for three seconds is way more powerful than a three second hug. There's something way more intimate. There's a deeper connection that happens in those three seconds than even a hug. Wow. So be prepared for that <laughs> feeling that, okay, I don't know, maybe that was too much, too soon. Maybe it was too soon. <laughs> well, that's because we're all connected, right? And the eyes are the windows to the soul. So I think when we, you know, I, I love that idea of the three second, or th- three second hug through the eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if, 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 and we know the eyes are the windows to the soul. So when we're you know, I think that's why, you know, lovers gaze into each other's eyes and there's all this right, poetry that's and, and so on and so deep. forth. So, so, yeah, I think it's great because I think people can be more and more connected and maybe maybe we could, you know, help people let go of some of the strife of the world and the anger and the resentments and the, well, that's really the separation. Not right no. The only thing that we have to do is be the, uh, look into someone's eyes with our our love and our joy. And then everything else, it takes all the pressure off. We're not in charge of anyone else's journey. It's almost like, mm, not really like, not that I don't care, but it really is almost, it sounds crazy disrespectful to, to say that I think that your journey should look like this. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. It has to, it has to come from like within, like it has to. Right. Or they have to come to us and say, listen, I'm ready. Okay. So we are within ourselves. 
right exactly ourselves to to put that out there to the world for what we want and uh, i think it's okay to do that because we we're happy people we want to be happy we want to share love we want to share joy so absolutely and i can see that emanating from you deborah for sure okay we are coming to a close. thank you we're a little bit over but kira how can we find you yeah, so you can find me. My website is kiraschindle.com. So exactly as my name is spelled, K-E-I-R-A dot S, or not, not, no dot. The Instagram no is dot. Kira dot Schindle, <laughs> but the website is just Kira Schindle. Um, and those are kind of my main two platforms. You can also find me on Facebook, but I'm not as active there. Um, send me an email, kira.schindle at gmail.com. And yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. It's been a blast. Yeah, thank you. Listen, hop over to the Blue Talks Flip Your Script Experience group on Facebook, even though you're not there that much. And then I think LinkedIn, YouTube, reach out to Corey and see where he's actually posting this interview and if you is all of, is all your information on your website yeah yeah so if you just put your website in each of the you know in each of the comments wherever we're posting this this event um, then people who are watching now or watching the replay can go back and find you perfect I love that thank you and we're gonna stay connected and yeah let's play together I'm excited sounds good thank you guys thank you you're awesome Sarah. great to see you again Corey, before can we switch again? I just I don't know why I'm like owning my corner. Yeah, no, Thank it should you be so much. much. Yes, no, I just feel better up there. Yeah. Randy Brown in the house on the stage. How are you? Hi, ladies. Hi, Randy. How's it going? Hey, awesome. How you awesome. doing today? Is that a manatee behind you? Excuse me. Is that a manatee painting behind you? What is that? Do you have a painting this behind one, this one here? What is that? It's got a light in front of it. It looks like a manatee. It's Ted Nugent. Oh my God. Sorry, Ted. <laughs> it's uncle Ted, uncle Ted Nugent. I'm in my RV. Oh my gosh. I'm not in my RV today, but I I'm right there with you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, have yeah. We met, wait, have we met before? Uh, just, uh, I think exchange some messages on Facebook maybe is all. So where in the world are you in your RV? Uh, currently, I'm in Memphis, Tennessee. Nice. Land and, of Ted Nugent, maybe, right? Uh, uh, he's more of a Detroit guy, but yeah. Well, music anyway, music. I was well, doing music. I was music making a music me. reference. <laughs> uh, I, leave, I live in Iowa, so um, this is part of my... Uh, annual how, how do i call it? annual winter southern music um uh oh there's a um what did i call it anyway festival or whatever uh celebration so i'm a big music guy like big beyond like stupid big and um i'm not a musician but i'm a, I'm a fan of of music just love music it means a lot to me but i just spent three weeks in uh, nashville and I'm going to spend a few days here. I'm really not far from Graceland right now. Um, the old, uh, all the Elvis stuff. And then I'm going to Austin for about a month. Awesome. Where, where, are, you, place. where are you stay? Where do you stay? Do you, are you an RV park guy yeah. or a hip camper? Or? Yeah. Okay. I'm an RV park guy. Yeah. Okay. Because we're big driveway surfers. <laughs> but we What's stayed that? in a we're, so my fiance and I've traveled for two years or more before we bought this old motel That's here. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. I remember that now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think yeah. the last time we spoke, I was probably somewhere in the world in an RV. Out, run around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we stayed in an awesome place in Austin called Estonia. And they just, it, it was a, it's a young couple. And actually they inspired this place, even though we're not, really not RV friendly, but what we'd like to be, but it was inspired by Austonia. They bought a, a couple of acres, <clears throat> well, I don't know, 10, 20 acres, right okay. outside of Austin. And they created this really cool, fun RV park. It's not wow. part of a thousand trails. It may, I think it's part of Passport America. And this was now probably two years ago we were there when they okay. just started. They only had like five spots open, but they were gonna build a pool and a, a community garden okay. space. I'll and check it out. Yeah. Estonia. And it's literally like, I don't know, it was like five, 10 miles less to get to town. We took an Uber. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. That's great. 
So stay in touch if you go there, because that would be awesome. We spent New Year's there, actually. That's where we spent New Year's two years ago in Austin, and we stayed at Austonia. Yeah. I love Austin. Yeah. Lots of fun. Lots of fun. The thing about Austin that's so cool to me is that, that, well, their level of musicianship is off the chart, just like it is in Nashville. But what I like is to go into some place, and I'm not a country honky-tonk guy at all, but I've learned to really appreciate it. And to go into a place and see a group of, of young guys in their early 20s playing music that was played 80 years ago to a T. Mm. You know, for, for all the different ways that they can approach music, that they're so into the tradition of that area of Texas and Austin itself and the people that came through there. I just think that is one of the most unbelievable things I've ever seen. That's amazing. Um, I, I'm having a little like, you know, on the road, you know, like, I'm so glad you're here. I'm feeling like I'm with you right now. Yeah. Not like that, but yeah. you know. Yeah. So, so tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, so now we know where you are. We know that you're in RV and really into music, but what brought you, brought you here to Blue Talks? All right. Well, uh, so I spent most of my career as a basketball coach um, uh, in, in the college at the college level, at the division one, uh, level. And that was great until my life, uh, kind of crashed and burned and I eliminated myself from ever coaching again, the rest of my life. And that was a, that was something that needed to happen because I was, uh, I was highly proficient on, on one end professionally, and I was a wreck uh, an absolute wreck. Um, I had created another person. So I was two people instead of one. And as I, as I call it, I was dragging around a dead man. So I was living a life of pornography for six and a half years that nobody knew of. And that was my mask. And that's what I used to, at least I created a, in my mind, a, a scenario where I needed it or I wouldn't be able to make it. So so why comfort and why why numb myself? Why looking for temporary? Um, we lost our four-year-old daughter. She was a day after her birthday in 1992. Our, so we had four girls. Our second daughter was hospitalized three times of the same rare fast-acting disease. And she made it, somehow miraculously made it. Our third oldest daughter passed away in 1998 of this disease. And our fourth daughter it, um, never uh, was never touched by it. So I'm in this, we're moving around the country like coaches do. And I, I'm trying to move up in the profession of which I was doing. But we did this all at the same time that all of this was going on. And I, I didn't and grieve properly. I worked harder. Uh, I drank harder. Um, but, and I was, I was really at it at the highest level I could possibly be at professionally. I don't know how I did it with, with, um, with all the, the, that I was dragging around, but I did. And, um, uh, the, the short of it is I had two federal agents walk in my office one day. And basically what they represented was a second chance in life. I didn't know it at the time, but I had the feeling, as I explained it, the feeling of freedom and sheer terror coursed through my body at the same time. Because I knew that there was going to be a tremendous fallout from it, but I knew that it was time. And I willfully um, just granted them everything that they wanted. And I, mm -hmm. I knew it was time. And I served two years of federal prison because of it. And uh, the silver lining in that is they sent me to specifically sent me to North Carolina to a prison that had a treatment program as part within the prison. Wow. Four hours a day for 635 days. I got to work on myself and why I felt I needed to access pornography and, 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 and all that went with it. 
And that made the whole difference because I would have come out of there pretty defensive and pretty angry and pretty this, you know, pretty still pretty entitled and the whole deal I came in with. And that made all the difference in the world. So I got home. I was pretty listless because I didn't, I was no longer a coach. So I didn't have an identity. I didn't know who I was. Right. But I worked through it. Um, unfortunately, after 32 year marriage, we were divorced about six, seven years ago. And I was off on my own. And it just came to me through dealing with friends and, and just people that were important in my life that I had another huge chapter left in my life. And how was I going to spend it? What was I going to designate it as? Mm -hmm. and, and I decided, not because of anything I came up with, but it just came to me that I have an unbelievable opportunity to share a story, to give a gift to others through my story, and then I can leave these things with others. And if you would sort of um, honor, if, if I could, yeah, sort of honor um, my children that I have, still have a 25 and 30 year old, uh, but, but my, my two four year olds that we lost, um, honor that loss and everything that went with it, all the grief and all the pain and, and the lingering and, 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 and all of that to honor other people that are that either have, are or will get to the point in life um, where they don't think they can go on anymore and they're going to find alternative ways to deal with with life. Mm -hmm. basically. I mean, I, I deal in adversity and and believe in responding because that way you can you can make the best decision possible when you respond and not react um, and not look for things that are going to make you feel better that are going to destroy you. There's ways to do it without destroying yourself. I, I was not about to go that way, but uh, I chose something else. But it, it, it all has got me to the point where I'm talking to you today, I guess, to answer your question. All That's of us. And it's, and it's all, and it sounds painful and it is a lot. And there was a lot of depression in there and there was a lot of, there's a lot of stuff, but I'll tell you all of the pain. Cause that was a, that's been a lifelong lingering question for me. What's all the pain for? We already lost them. They're not here. Now we, after they leave, we have all this pain. Mm -hmm. well, I don't get it. I don't get it. That's zero plus zero equals zero. So I had to reframe that. I'm a former math teacher, so I reframed that mathematics, right? So it, it's a big win is the way I see it. And, and I really feel that if today was the last day, if something happened today where this today was my last day, um, I, I want to know that at least I was working toward delivering this gift to people. And w when it is my last day, I want to know that people could clearly see that, that I recognize that it was about other people. And I could use my story, not to talk about me, but use my story to make a point about what do we do in this world? We all go through it. Some of us going through, well, everybody's going through something right now, actually. But the bigger stuff is, is where we tend to stumble because we don't think we can deal with it. So, so that's me, uh, coach, author. Uh, I wrote a book called Rebound Forward. Rebound is my big word. A big word. Rebound. Got, I like it. We got to get up. We got to get up and we got to go forward. We got to rebound forward. It's wow. Yeah. And look I'm at you not, now. I mean, you're like living your dream. You're, 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 you're inspired. You're inspiring others. Yes. Big yes. time. Big time. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm really, really, really excited. I owe a lot to Corey. A lot. Uh, in a lot of different ways. I owe a lot to him. He's been a big part of my journey and a, a big part of this whole thing turning because I didn't do it by myself. Now I look back and I can see where people were just tapping me on the shoulder left and right all the time. And I didn't get it. And he was one of them. We talked about that yesterday about the miracle being the ability to recognize the miracle because they're everywhere, right? The teacher, yeah. the gift is the ability to recognize the teacher because we're all teachers. Yes. And they're always, yes. We're always showing up for each other. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, so you've, so that's the miracle is that you've been able to recognize that miracle and that gift in your life. And yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Deborah. 
You're kind of exactly. Well, so. I'm taking it all in. That's uh, I've had the pleasure of of being in a, a breakout room with Randy before as well, but I hadn't heard your full story, Randy. And uh, yeah. I'm I'm really um, I feel privileged to have uh, shared those moments with you here in this interview. Um, so raw yeah. and vulnerable, and I think that's really important. Is for people, we're afraid of vulnerability, I think. I've been afraid of being vulnerable for a long time. I was raised to be strong and, you know, yeah. you didn't let people see things. And, you know, as yeah. a woman in business, you had to be, you know, you you, you, know, you were in a masculine world, really. Uh, right. You know, most of my clients were, were men and I had to be a strong personality. And so I just love that that so many of us now and so many speakers such as yourself and authors and you, Elise, and Corey, yes, Corey, Corey has helped so many of us. Um, and, but that we recognize now that it's okay and it's necessary to be open yes. and vulnerable. Yeah. It yes, might it be is. embarrassing for a moment. You know, yeah. I've, I've done some embarrassing things and some, you know, that I wish I hadn't or whatever, sure. but you know what, when we can share them with other people, and share what we've learned and the value in in that whole experience. There's somewhere, someone, someone somewhere that needs that. Yes. So I, I thank you, Randy, for being so open and raw with that because that's well, wonderful. Th thanks, thanks for that. And, and thanks for uh, your comments about transparency. You know, transparency welcomes transparency. It's it's the safe it's a safe door that opens is I mean, it is I've done it dozens of times when I'm transparent with another man, usually men. It is I mean, uh, they're weeping before they even get a chance to tell me what what they even got together with me for in the first place. It was something of a burden, right? <laughs> and and they're weeping by the time they even get to their part and they're like and they just freely and it gushes out and it is unbelievable and these are things they've never told anybody because by telling your story what i've learned is by telling by being transparent first you create this safe place for them but you you automatically have created a, a space of non-judgment because because right. I'm freely safe, telling like this safe space, yeah, yeah, and now all of a sudden, and, and and that's so freeing. Like I was saying, when two federal agents walked in, and I knew that that it was over, uh, uh, that part of my life was over. Um, it was such a, uh, I I've never felt a freedom like that, and that's what happens when we're that. That's what's so cool about being transparent and being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Allow others to to take the mask off and say, "No, this is the real me." Let me tell you some stuff. And they walk out of there lighter than a feather, man. Just you can see it. We were just talking about how I'm like, "Go look in the mirror right now. You're totally a different person than when you came in here, right?" Yeah. And yeah. actually, speaking of, I think we've we you've been on the stage before. I've heard this. I mean, I yeah. remember the story, and I have to tell you, I almost. I recognized you, but your energy has shifted. There's, I keep hearing that. I'm telling you, and it was like a year ago or something. I think you were in an office, though. I don't think you were in your RV at the time. Right. No, and I, I have to right. tell you, you have this softer, it's a softer look about you. So I recognized you, but I did. I do see the shift. That it's is a lighter, so more playful kind of vibe that, you, that you're emitting right now. That is so cool. Thanks for telling me that. Yeah. You know what happened yesterday? I'm on the phone. I'm driving from Nashville to Memphis. I'm on the phone with someone who I haven't seen for four years. And 10 seconds into the conversation, she goes, what happened to you? She goes, your voice is 100% different. Now, I couldn't. We're not Zooming, right? I'm mm -hmm. talking on the phone. And she yeah. pulled it out of my voice. She's a coach. And I said, you got to be kidding me. You can tell a difference. And she went on and on and on about it. Yep. There's, it's so, a, I guess it's more, it's softer. It's yeah. more rounded. Yeah. yeah. So yay. Yay for you. Yay I've for us. Awesome. We get to meet you. This of version of you. Yeah. It's a gentleman. I've done a lot of work. Yeah. 
a gentle. A lot of it's there. around losing my. Gentle. Mind. That's it. It's a gentle. It's gentle. You have like yeah. a gentle vibe about you. And look at now you can see the playful in your eyes and ah, I love it. Nice to meet this version of you for the first time, Randy. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, so I have a, a question. I like the, the interactive part of 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 this uh, interview of the interviewing part. I'm like all like let's get real. Let's have a conversation. So let's just say. So, are you saying that you work mostly with males, or does male female? Do you have like a specific sort of genre? Since my intention. My intention. I'm probably. Uh, it, it, here's where I'm at in the process. I think I'm very close. I haven't established my coaching, the coaching part of my business. I'm really focusing on the speaking first. The coaching will come second. But my right. intention is to speak with really accomplish. Uh, accomplished, driven uh, professionals, men who are stressed out, um, who are, who have every opportunity to look elsewhere, to find ways of of comforting themselves. I'm trying to find me, basically, and so, Many ways, sure. yeah, yeah, and so, and so men, yes, but I am open to uh, men and women, but I will probably, the, the men will be my target audience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get an interactive piece in here that we can apply, like the flip your script perspective shifting piece. So, yeah. uh, what, so is there maybe one specific thing that you can remember or that you pull out when you're having a moment? Because we still have moments. We, we all didn't, I know that I didn't get a get out of being human free card just because I can sit here and have the knowledge yeah. and the gift of being connected. When, I, when I'm disconnected, I'm just as disconnected as all y'all. When I'm connected, I might be like really in the light and that's why I love what I do, but out of that, mm. So is there something that you can maybe share with us that you use as a tool or as a like a flip your script kind of thing to help yeah. you shift when you're having a, what I call you're in a, in a storm or potentially in a storm? You got to give me 15 seconds because I got your answer. Okay, cool. I think one of the things, Elise, uh, pertaining to this is everybody is looking for relief. That's it. That's the bottom line. You nailed it. Like right there. It's all about relief. Right. And I think that, that, you know, sometimes we go about looking, dealing for relief or, or finding relief in the wrong way, but well, it's, a, it's, it's a moment. Yeah. It's a momentary satisfaction, but sometimes when we do that in ways that it are, are detrimental to us and we all have probably done it, um, then we're looking for relief from that. And then we're looking for the relief from guilt of that. And then we're looking for the relief of the anger of that. But I think it all boils down. I'm, to I'm on a journey like that. And it's all about the hormones. I was looking for relief and I went in a direction that I would have never gone to bioidentical hormone pellets. And I'm being really raw right now. And now I am playing that whole thing of what did I do? Because I've gotten a diagnosis that is, definitely not something that anyone would want and i'm now thank gosh i do I'm, and i'm so grateful for what i do because i'm now pulling all of these things to get myself back in balance now i'm playing how to get back into where i was because i was looking for relief from an imbalance in hormones and i went and was just like a drug really i went and did it in the wrong way and it didn't resonate with who i am or my body and now i'm having an opportunity <laughs> <laughs> to take a journey, take a back road journey right now that I didn't expect in in my life right now, but it's really just an experience, right? And it's how I'm showing up in the experience and, and how I can take this experience and maybe down the line share this experience with somebody else because I'm still in the middle of it. I'm not really sharing it right now openly because I don't really know. I'm figuring it out. But um, yeah, so we all, I mean, it's not just drugs or alcohol or porn. I mean, we look for relief in different ways and there's a lot of choices in this buffet of life. But my biggest, my biggest takeaway is follow your gut. And I didn't do that. I kind of was like, I listened to someone else. I'm like, okay, well, whatever. And, but I knew, I missed that my whole life. I would never have gone that direction. So where we find relief, may, yeah. where we look for relief, 
may not be in the typical places, like the bad choices that we can, or choices that don't benefit us may not just lie in alcohol or drugs or, you know, the traditional mainstream ways that we hear about. So right. I get it, girl. I'm a minute. Okay. Back to you, Randy. All right. So my answer to that is it's usually what I'm telling myself. It's almost never what other people are telling me. It's what I'm telling myself. It's the mm -hmm. voice inside my head. I can't do it. I'm not good enough. I blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And so I get, you know, the, the, the shameful part um, comes, to, comes to the surface. I'm not good enough comes to the surface. What will people think comes to the surface? All of that. So I bring this, I bring this picture out and I talk to this guy. Oh, isn't he cute? Mm. The so, golfy Randy. So that's me, and I talk to this guy. And, what do you say? Well, and then he talks to me, you know, and he, so he tells me, uh, well, I, I, I can go two different ways um, w when I project his voice. It's like, listen, you clown, what are you talking about? You, you know, what you, you're crazy. Get, get off that, get off that stupid so, negative soapbox and come on, you know, better than that, blah, blah, blah. Right. So I got that voice. And then I just got that, just a more of a soft, soothing uh, tone of, you know, you know who you are. And you're dedicated to using this last chapter of your life to helping a lot of people. And I'm so behind you. And Meredith and Natalie are so behind you. And Claire and Jane we are, are so proud of you. And you got to just take a walk around the block right now. Go walk around the block. And mm -hmm. get yourself straightened out. And let's get rid of that. And so it, it's, it's self-talk, which makes me grab this picture and have have a conversation i love it and it's so I hear, strong i, I mean, hear it, him saying to you I, oh, you man. are amazing yeah. i you make me smile look at the yeah. smile on his face well you know what when you did the little smile before yes. like i saw that little i see look there you it. go like i can see that was the first that's what i saw come out and i'm like oh my gosh it's so I'm, childlike I'm it's so crazy of that you know it's so that's cute. what i see he's saying we got this we're a team yeah. you're not in yeah. this alone i'm right here yeah. bud i'm it's, here for you it's funny that you're pulling out that picture i don't have it in here right now i have it in i'm in one of our suites but i have it in the rv that we're in right now yeah. and i found a picture of me when i was like three or four and i was like yeah. as i'm going through what i'm going through i put this picture on yeah. the refrigerator. I Are haven't I haven't had a conversation with her yet, but I you're a gentle reminder that it's time. Yeah. yeah. I found her and I put her up. That was a start. So I think I'm not sure what I'll say to her, but you're encouraging I, me. I I had a I had an experience two days ago that, that's right along with this. I gotta tell you this. And yeah, please. I, I did a podcast and at the end of the podcast she said she said, I asked this same question to all my guests. Last question is, okay, she said, your five-year-old you, what would, what would they say to you right now? And what I'll would they you, say to you? It's usually you reverse. You? What would you say to your five-year-old? Yes. She flipped the script and, on that one. And... I got, I really got, it took me into this place and I, I got, I got really emotional to where I could almost not answer the question. And I said, he's really proud of me. And that was hard to say. It was, it was a healing moment. I think I'm feeling a little tear well up in my eye too. Oh it's my gosh. Even I, that was, right now. I was instantly emotional. And I could, and I wanted to hear that voice. And I said, I think, and then, then I said, I, I know he's proud of me. He's proud of me. And, and that's all I could say. And that was it. <laughs> wow. What a way to finish a, an interview, you know, with something like that. But 
she goes, I don't think anybody's ever teared up on that question, but she goes, there's a reason you did. And, um, and I think that uh, the tearing up is because you actually, so there's different versions of us, right? There's the five-year-old version. There's the, I don't know how old, how old was the version you just pulled up a year, eight months, a year. How old is the, in the yeah, overall a year? Yeah. About a year. So I think yeah, that there's the versions of so the versions of different versions of us show up at different times in our life, you know, and like if I'm working with an individual is having a, con a repetitive challenge, I call it buffering. Like how old are you yeah. when that, when, when you respond that way, even though you consciously say, I'm never going to do that again. Right. And right. when you bring up that question to somebody first, they're like, I'm this age. I'm like, no, you're not your, excuse my language, badass self. That's not really a curse, a but, cause I know you don't do cursing Deborah, but um, well, it's, it's a, <laughs> Oh, I thought you said something about helping people not curse or something. Oh, stop cursing, cussing, I said. Stop yes, cussing. Yes, stop cussing. That doesn't mean that I don't. Oh, okay. Well, whatever. So badass. We're just going to say it. Badass. So, it, yeah, it's not your badass now self. It's the version of you that had a game-changing moment that's showing up and responding in the way that that version responded at that time and when we have that awareness of like whoa like for a long time my 17 year old was picking out my relationships and i had to have a talk with her she wasn't making good decisions she was mm -hmm. falling in love from the heart but they just weren't the you know and they were good in that sense but they weren't full right they weren't the the fulfilling mm -hmm. relationship that's going to take you know grow together and, and grow this incredible life together right. so it's a good question to ask ourselves like what version is showing up at different times in our life. Like I would, my question would be like, what version showed up in your, in the, in the journey of your pornography time, right? I'm sure it wasn't the right. version of you that showed up as the coach that people respected, right? That, that looked up to you. It was the younger version that was still working through stuff, making those choices in a grown up yeah. body. Yeah. Yeah. So, so along the, the whole thing is going to be wrapped around to when the five year old said that he was proud of you. The beautiful thing that I see that brought tears to my eyes when you said is that you actually believe it now yourself. And yeah. because people could tell us they're proud of us all the time. Well, you yeah. could be told how awesome you are and how much they love you. But if we don't feel it, yeah. and I know personally, I get told all the time when people come and families come and stay here, this place is magic that we created. And I mean, I, I feel honored to have found it and, and have the honor of of growing this space, right? It's like, yeah. it's not even our place. It's, we were drawn here, I saw it, and now I can take care of it and nurture it and grow it. But right. there's times when I don't feel it and it's and it sucks because yeah. I wanna feel what they're telling me. It's nice to hear it, but it's when you feel it, when it's really like in you right now and it brings up those tears. Right, yeah. And so I see that you're coming together, the versions of you are, like merging together and becoming yeah. this softer, gentler, fun, sweet version. There was, yeah, there was a just a rush of healing. I thought w when it happened. I mean, I could feel it mm. b because, like you said, now that because when I truly believed it, that was healing. I know that has not been the case. Right, I would have not answered that, you know, in the past like that. Right, might have just might have just said it. Oh, we might have just said this, but nothing, right? Oh yeah, no response. Yeah, yeah. No. I gotta Randy, think about that. Randy, I have you to have come out, come onto this other side from where you were at. You know, basically, in some ways, you know, the depths of despair. You know, the you know the losing of your children. I mean, I I just can't even imagine that, and my heart goes out to you and your family. But for you to have come through to the way you are now, and we can see this, and everybody watching this is going to see and feel this energy, I believe. We see it in your eyes. We've seen it in your smile. We've seen it in the picture of the little boy. We, it's, it, And that little boy is, is as, as... Still there. He's still there, bright and shining and coming through. Right there. He's you know, right there. Yeah. And he's, and, and he's saying, hey, we're like, we're born together again here. We're, we're in our first year. You're learning stuff just like I was learning stuff.
So we're yeah. they're doing this together, buddy. And and people, I I feel not only do people feel your vulnerability, and I guess I'll speak for myself here, but I feel your strength. I feel your strength coming through in a in in that gentle, soft way that makes people just want to give you the biggest hug and feel your big hug. That's kind of how I feel at the moment. And and so while there's where's that that softness, there's still that strength that you, that I feel that you are going to help others feel on their journey. Yeah. Thanks. And you command space as soon as you as soon as you popped up. You command that space that you're in. I just, uh, so I, I'm going to change the subject totally right now because I just have a voice. What kind of RV are you in? Right yeah. now? I'm, I really wanted to ask it in the beginning. <laughs> I know we're just going to like lighten it up just a little bit. I just want to. Well, I, I can give you a little, I can give you a little tour. It's a 35 wow. foot Winnebago. Oh my God. It's a mini, is it a mini Winnie? No, no, no. It's 35 foot. It's a, it's a motor oh, home. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, we have a 31 foot um, mini Winnie. Okay. And I've decorated it with memorabilia from all the shows and, and things I've been to for all the years I've been. a. Oh, you're a class student. A. Yeah, it's. Is that a class A? It's a class A, yeah. Yeah, I can see the front part of it. I love it. I didn't even know they made class A's. Yeah. So, yeah, I love it. What a great, what a great layout. And then you have the bedroom in the back. Right. Okay. King and bed then the in the back. Yeah. Nice. No, it's, it, I, I, I literally want for nothing when I'm in this and, and get off the road and open the slides up. It's, it's like an apartment. So I got everything I need. I, I get it. I get it. We bought a 31 foot mini Winnie with a, a double slide out with a queen yeah. size bed in the back and it, but a, but a class C um, yeah. she's for sale right now. If anybody wants to buy her, cause we are not on the road anymore. Uh, and she only has 56,000 miles on her, which is amazing for a Winnebago with 2007 right. or 2006, oh. I think. Oh yeah. Oh, that's, a she's good. a classic. Yeah. That's a good unit. Yeah, and so is yours. Well, that's so sweet. Okay, so uh, here's a question that I, when I remember and we don't get caught up in the moment, ask every, all of our guests. So in Flip Your Script, I use some analogies, thought weeds and mind seeds, because these are, it's all thought related at the root, right? Thoughts mm -hmm. that we think over time become our belief. Mm -hmm. Our belief then forms our perspective. Our perspective then creates the reality in which we show up. We look. Our perspective is the lens that we look at the world with, and that creates the reality that we that that shows up around us. Right. So thought weeds can turn into beliefs too, right? That don't serve us. So a mind seed is what we would plant in place of a thought weed. So when we flip our script, sometimes it's really hard to flip the script because we're so focused on what we want to get rid of that we've lost sight of what we really want. So if you could share with us and our viewers a, a mind seed, which is neutral, right? Which is full of relief. It's not resistant. Like you can't say I'm awesome and I'm great if you don't feel it. You could right. say today is a great day for a great day, which leaves a gr it open for a great day to show up. Mm -hmm. So if you could share a mind seed or, or a seed of thought that people could plant in their minds as they're learning to flip their script that could help them to grow a life that they may love themselves a little more in, mm -hmm. what would that be? So, so a, a negative, a negative thought, right? Well, no, the <laughs> thought weed we want to get rid of. We want to, we want to, instead of the, we're pulling the thought weed and now we want to place a seed of perspective, a, 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 a new perspective, a thought of a new thought that you can place right. in, in, in that space that, yeah. When you flip your script, you have to think of what you want. And sometimes it's just right. really hard when you're so focused on what you don't want. It is hard. It is hard. So I, I was in this pattern of thinking about loss. And then I would take loss and turn it into failure. All right. So, you know, losing children. I, I somehow 
I, I, I don't know. I, I somehow made that my fault. Mm. And then it became a failure. This is part of the healing I've had. And uh, some of this has come fairly recently. And it was, I mean, it was the most whew, demanding. Um, it took all the energy I had out of me to come to reckon with the fact that that I didn't contribute to my daughter's deaths. I, I had I had created this. I went from loss to the, the the fact that it was my fault. And boy, then there's the loss of my profession, which was a huge hit for me. And that's an identity piece. And that's you know, I was eight years old when I decided I wanted to be a basketball coach. I, I, I forgot being a fireman. I was at a basketball practice. I can tell you exactly what was going on that day. And I forget that fireman. Who wants to do that? I want to be a basketball coach. I, was hmm. I mean, it was a really pivotal moment. And, and uh, you know, that, that, that little guy made that decision. But, and it was so much a part of who I was as a as a player and loving the game just having a love for the game and then being able to coach the game i thought it was the coolest thing ever and they pay you for it how does that work it's like That's a dream a come true for real yeah yeah it's like what pay so when i decided that i was that they were they were going to pay me to do it i go i think i could do that for a job but so there was a loss and that was a huge loss and then I turned that into, well, it was a loss because of what I had done to create me losing the profession, losing the opportunity. So there's another huge one. I remember um, you know, my girls coaching um, and then after a 32 year marriage, we, we were divorced. My wife asked for a divorce to wanted to kind of finish this thing up on her own. And when there's only two of you involved, you, you, and one decides it's over, it's over. Right. Mm. So, but it's part of the whole puzzle of where I'm at today. So, and I didn't see it at the time, but I do, I start to see it now. So how did that you flip the script on, like take all of these? Yep. So the losses, which turned into failures, and I, can, I, I created that, I came to see as being part of a puzzle. Mm. Or, or if you would, if you would, let's use the example of a quilt. And, and this is one of the coolest things I've, I remember reading about this. And then I, I talked about it in my, I dedicated part of the, my book about the, the, the quilt. And there's a quilt of life. And I, I so strongly believe that uh, in this analogy. And if you look at the back of the quilt, it is our life. Mm. And then I can see all the loss and I can see all of the failure, let's say. OK. And, you know, the, the, the strength, the colors don't match. The strings are long. You know, th this looks like unmanageable over here. It just looks terrible. But I have been allowed. And I don't know how it, this was manifested, but I've been allowed to sneak around and look at the front of it. And when I saw the front of it, I thought. Oh my gosh, it was all done for this reason and this purpose. Look at how beautiful this quilt is. Right. I didn't know that when all that was going on in the, in the bigger scope, there was this beautiful thing being created. Now, how, how does that relate to me right now and flipping the script? I think I'm on the very, very early stages mm -hmm. of, of that other side. But I've been allowed to see it, what it's going to look like. Wow. And part of my healing 
and part of the work that I've had to do individually with my coach and with other people that I know is what, what are you going to do with all of this, all the pain and, and, and all of this. And so I've, I've learned to take the loss and if you want to call it failure, which I did, I took all that and I just crumpled it up and I walked, I'm, I'm walking around. And that's another thing I have to do every day is walk around the other side and to know that what I'm going to be able to do and hopefully what I'll stand for in the eyes of others is someone who has proven that the things that happen to us, there's a much larger global orchestra playing the music in that and and they're playing music that is gonna is beautiful right all the all those instruments together it, it all does come together miraculously somehow how the loss and the failure and the pain can turn into something that beautiful as that orchestra or that picture of that quilt mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i know that to be true more than i know anything because we, I, 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 I can't imagine being on this earth and having pain and having loss and having the horrible things that happen to people in their lives, whether they caused it or not. And to know that, oh, that's the end of it. That's it. That's all there was. Really? I'm not buying that. There's no way that's all there is. Okay. What are we going to do with it? It's It can be transformed. It can be transferred to, and I didn't do any of this. That's what's beautiful about it. It, it might sound like it as you, as you hear me talk about it. I didn't do this. This was done. All of these were things were done so that I could do the work that I'm about to do. Well, but you're already doing it. I'm just saying. Yeah. Like, I, I know we're always like, I'm going to do this. You already are. Yeah. Yeah. So, like right now, today, like you already are. You yeah. touched my life. And it's really all about me. So you're good, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, Louise, Elise keeps saying listen. it's all about her. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not, I'm, listen, that's being honest and vulnerable because know, it is, all, it's all about us. Oh, it's all about Randy. It's all about Deborah, And that's okay. You know, people are like, that's selfish, but it has to be all about us. Yeah. Because when it's all about us from the heart, and it's yeah. all about us from the soul, and it's all about us from a place of wanting to, to, to emanate the best of who we are, that's important. And sometimes we miss that vital piece because we're so busy giving and giving and giving that who are, who's giving? Who's right. the one that's giving? Right. I think, Randy, yeah. your quilt is going to get bigger and bigger. Totally. And you'll just be enveloped in that quilt, and you'll envelop all of those who help you in that quilt. And there's no coincidence in life at all. And that that orchestra is just going to make you dance. Mm. Yeah. Well, and you're a music guy, so you're going to go dance now, right? Aren't you going out no. on the town or something? I'm a music guy. I'm not Randy. a dancer. I'll tell you when you get to Austin, you, you better you better stay away. You better not stand too close to that dance floor. Those people dance. Oh they're yeah. Nobody business. Boy, are they good. New Year's I, was crazy, 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 crazy. Oh. Anyway, I want to thank you so much. And I actually, you know what? I'm feel I'm I'm honored to have met you again. Yes. And I'm excited to see the Great. versions of you that keep showing up each time oh. we meet, because this is definitely a continuation of more. Who knows? We might even meet on the road. Right. You never know. And you're always that welcome to take what, means a lot what you said. It really does. I, I thank you so much for that. Just, you know, yeah. I, just telling it like it is, Randy. Not, right. not everybody always likes it, but I'm glad that you appreciate it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we're going to say thank you so much. Oh, where can we find you? Where can we find your book? You can find me in an RV. In your town, you know, I'm. I'm <laughs> the wiki wachi. We'll make a spot for you. We're not RV like we don't take RVers, but we have a spot where we had our 31 foot. You'd fit right in. Oh, come, do? yeah, come on over, and we'll go kayaking and hang out with the manatees and go listen oh, to live wow. local music. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, 
you can find me on all the social media spots. I am on Instagram, uh, Rebound Forward Book. I am on uh, Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on uh, LinkedIn. You can find me in those places. And then my speaking website, where you where there's a, a, a demo video and things for, for people that uh, might be interested in taking a look further to see if I might uh, have a message that their folks need to hear. Uh, would love to have them go to RB Speaks. My initials of Randy Brown, rbspeaks.com. That's my main speaking website. And awesome. love to um, love to just hear from anybody that that may need this message. And that we live in a world of hurting people. I say this all the time when I stand in front of a group, when I get up on stage and stand in front of a group, what I see in order for me to give my message the way it needs to be projected, what I see are a lot of people that have things that are breaking their back. I see a lot of faces that are just like they're not even there. I see a lot of hurting people and, and that's, I go into it with that perspective because I know that to be the truth. <laughs> now wow. there's also a lot of masks on and I wish I could say, Hey, everybody. All right, listen, we're going to close the doors in the back. All right. This is okay. Everybody take their mask off. Come on. And, and that's what I'm trying to really trying to do with my message. I'm trying to get what I want to, what I want to hear is people who contact me after they've heard me speak or heard my message on online or in one of the social media outlets or whatever and say, boy, I wonder if I can talk to that guy. I would, he seems to be a guy I could really talk to. And then they could take the mask off and then we can start to do the real work that needs to be done. Now to me, Man, let that phone ring. I want to. I want to hear from those people because then I can. Then my story comes becomes live. It becomes live in a part of someone else's life. Absolutely. Really cool. Well, we're going to stay in touch for sure. Yes, guys. and Thank you um, so appreciate. Thank Deborah. you for taking your mask off for us. I think that your mask came off even from the beginning to the end of of this interview. So that's been a great experience to have firsthand. Cool. Yeah. Um, appreciate you. Go have some fun. Enjoy Estonia in Austin. Cool yeah. place. And if you and if you want any more, you know, information about Austin, I'm sure you've been there before. Just reach out. We could talk RV. Yeah. I love it. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank Thanks, you so Andy. much. It's been a pleasure. You bet. You bet. Oh. What a guy. Oh my god. I I knew I knew him, but there was a shift. Like it was like the same person, but yeah, what a pleasure. Hello. Hi, Samantha. Hello. Good morning and good afternoon. <laughs> Where are you from? I'm in I'm in Minnesota. Minnesota. You're in you're in the States. That's yes. close closer, but colder. Yes. <laughs> Where in Minnesota are you? I'm about two hours west of Minneapolis, St. Paul, outside of a really small town called Atwater. Oh my gosh, I think I might have been there. So there was a Renaissance Fest. Do they have an annual Renaissance Festival in Minnesota? Do you like it? I, my gosh, it was the most amazing thing that mm -hmm. I've ever experienced in my life. It was like walking into another world, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> like you cross a moat and everything. Like yes. It was literally a castle entrance. <laughs> yes, everyone's dressed up, amazing <laughs> food. Yeah, oh God, it's literally like, like stepping into a, a, a fairy tale book. And I, you know, I just showed up. I did get my like little, you know, the, what is it? The, the bell thing. And, you know, I got, I was, I got more into character as I was there, but I didn't know what to expect. You know, we were just traveling around the country and we were visiting some friends near where I think you are. I'll have to let you know. I'm not so sure, but oh my gosh, what an amazing place. And I think we went to, is there a candy, one of the biggest candy stores in the world yes. near you? Yes. Big yellow building. That's like two blocks long. Yes. That'd be fun. <laughs> Car, somehow a car drove into it a couple of years oh. ago. Like there was a huge accident on that road. Really? So it's still there, but it's been, I think, being remodeled the last couple of years. But yes, it's yeah, huge, huge yellow building on the side of the highway. 
like in the middle of nowhere. Yes. They're like, we're going to a candy store. I'm like, on the way to a Renaissance festival? What do you mean? We pull over and this was like a mile long. Yes. It never ends. (laughs) And I remember they had like a whole section of bacon candy. Like it was stuff that you couldn't even imagine that people made candy out of. I mean, bacon candy is a little bit, you know, it's not so different, but there was, it was crazy. So much fun. Well, welcome to the stage. Thank you. And um, okay, so you're you're in Minnesota. Is that where you're from? Yes, I was born and raised here. Okay, and yeah. family. Like I like to get into. I can never tell people's ages. Like I'll ask somebody, and I don't even think they're old enough to have a kid, and they have two grandkids. So <laughs> obviously, <laughs> age is not my forte. Yep, I'm married. My husband and I live on a farm. Uh, almost directly between where his parents' farm is and where my parents' farm is. Wow. Um, And we both have, I have an older brother. He has a younger brother. Um, No kids, but we have fur babies. You do? Um, We have a couple of dogs. Uh, One Victorian bulldog and one is a pit bull crossed with an American boxer. So he's a tall, big boy. Wow. Well, I thought on a farm, I mean, you could have horse fur babies. You could have fur babies. Yeah. (laughs) Do you have animals on your farm or no. oh, you don't live on a farm? You live yeah, in between two farms. We do live on a farm. I grew up on a pig farm and my husband grew up on a dairy farm. Um, but as the times have evolved, our, both of our family farms with livestock were too small to to keep going that way um, as mm-hmm. things got bigger and more commercialized with livestock production. So just crop farming. And then my husband has an agribusiness Oh, wow. As well. Yeah. That's exciting. And so what brought you, how did, what brought you to the stage? Obviously there's a message behind the farming or the who you are, right? Yeah, absolutely. So my whole business is centered around leadership cultivation and it's taken me a few years to get to the point where I'm at today. um, Like really bringing the roots and the heritage of what I grew up with, bringing the strength of being rural from a farm in the country into what I see as an opportunity for global leadership change and really revitalizing what it means to lead and inspire people rather than manipulate or push or coerce people, right? So yeah, this, yeah the, the, the whole concept of flipping the script for me really comes back to Um, women in rural communities that have creativity and strength and power and vision, but oftentimes aren't given the opportunity to cultivate it, to grow it, Um, Mm -hmm. and taking that and translating it into other communities and and around the world, how these very simple, simple lessons of, right, sowing your own seeds, cultivating your true self, it's all so archetypal because we've all come, every single one of us came from an agrarian society at some point. So we get the language, we can feel it in our bones. So even if we live in a metropolitan area or a larger community, there's still this essence of reconnecting to our roots and and settling into nature or into our nature to be the best leader of our own life and take that into service for other people if that's what we choose to do with it eventually. Mm -hmm. But first, at least stepping into the the natural state of who we are, right? Yes, absolutely. The -hmm. the grounding of it, the grounding of the ideas, the, the, and, and, and with the agriculture, the very act of it. Um, I can relate. I, I grew up on a, on a farm as well. (laughs) And, um, and funnily enough, we had dairy and then, uh, it, it, we had a pig farm later on, so I can relate to both uh, both you and your wow. husband. There. I'm from New York City, so I can't say much. And we've owned my fiance and I got micro, micro pigs for 18 hours, and then realized we had to return them because they probably weren't going to stay small. <laughs> That's my experience with pigs. <laughs> well, we had a few more than that. <laughs> so in can so you had a farm in Canada, Deborah. Yes, yeah, in uh, I grew up in Saskatchewan, uh, so it, yeah, and it was a, I, it's a great life to to grow up in. I have zero regrets about coming from a farm and, like you say, literally the grassroots yes. learning and the being grounded, and uh, I think it's so important. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. So something, I mean, I know that, so you've recognized things growing up, right? Mm -hmm. Living yeah. in this environment and probably being the creative that didn't feel heard. Right. <laughs> Not H-E-R-D, but H-E-A-R-D, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You might have been herded <laughs> and not heard. Right. <laughs> So is there a specific moment that you remember that kind of was like that flip for you that you were like, you know what, wait a second, I recognize, right, that this may, what could be challenge or, I don't know, block in your life has mm -hmm. an opportunity maybe to, to, to be fertilized and cultivated and grow? Yeah, I think um, like Deborah, how you use the word grassroots, right? And I, I grew up with a dad who was like this big, huge, strong farmer. But from him, I learned how to be very gentle and compassionate and patient, right? I would work in the barns with him and watch him singing and whistling and humming to the pigs and like go out in the field with him and see how he would check the leaves of the crops and just be so gentle with them, even though he was this big, strong, powerful man. And then on the other side, my mother, was a really strong woman. She was an innovative, she still is, a very powerful and innovative um, public school superintendent who was trying to transform the narratives of rural education and what it means to be a leader to help kids grow and develop and nurture them completely differently than how so many schools are set up. So I, I saw around me as a, as a child, um, my dad seemed to be different than most men that I observed who were just really, really rigid and tough all the time. And then on the other side, seeing my mom, where a lot of women in our community did stay at home to raise their kids or help on the farm. Um, and she had this really powerful job and became an award-winning administrator doing this, this crazy work. And um, I started to wonder like, what what is this what is leadership then if all the things that are supposed to be a certain way aren't happening that way like what are the rules what are these un the unwritten rules in culture and in our communities that are saying in order to be successful you have to be that you have to work so many hours in order to be successful you have to have certain titles and you have to have a certain job so um or make a certain an, amount of money yes exactly and eventually burn yourself out because you're just doing it all based on what everyone else expects, not even what other people need, just what the certain few that are like our cultural editors expect from us. And, and what are the implications of that in our lives? So like I said, as a kid growing up, I had these models. I also saw like I had a female pastor, we had a female veterinarian. So I thought it was normal for women to be in leadership. And I thought it was normal for girls to be in charge of things until I stepped into adulthood and started hearing stories about women's experiences in leadership and the, the comments that men would make to them and the low, low, low percentages of women who are in, in public service or in the private sector um, and the toll that that fight then takes on them at home, right? So, so how to flip the script on, instead of leading outwardly first, how do you lead inward and take those lessons out to other people? See, it's all about us, Deborah. I'm telling it you. is. <laughs> it is. You are right, Elise. I'm right there with you. <laughs> It's funny because everybody, if you, if you knew me personally, they're always like, it's all about you, the queen of everything. It's all about you. I mean, yeah, in a good way, though, because when I show up and I'm the be my best self, like if I showed up here and I was like, ah, you know, whatever, and I didn't say anything, how fun, like, what would that be like? You know, so it's like, yeah, it's a well, joke. It has to be about us. It has to be about us and our perspective, mm -hmm. flipping the script from from a perspective like you just said samantha you know from people you observed men you observe compared to what your life and your father was at home i can relate when you talk about the the animals and things like that um we once had a hired man um he actually was uh um someone who my dad was big into the um uh, 
parolees and things like that. He was on the board. And so he, he was a gentleman who was on parole and came to live at our home and be, work on our farm. And uh, he loved the animals so much. The, and my dad always said we had a radio in the barn because when the, the when the cows hear beautiful music, they give more milk. And, and yeah, <laughs> and that. and when when a commercial would come on, or God forbid, the news, Dennis would go and change the channel instantly. He'd be up and change that channel of music. And so it's just, I know it's just interesting. I, I love hearing your perspective because I, I, I can relate to so much of it. Yeah. And so I just want to make a comment too on something that you said that for me, I was like, really? Like, so being a city girl, I mean, I've traveled, but growing up in even suburbia in the city, hearing you say that you grew up with women in leadership in like rural in rural country, like I would have never in my mind, if, if I had an image of like who the vet was and, and who was in leadership, it would definitely not be like w surrounded by women. Right. So for me, that's a whole new perspective that I wouldn't have even thought was happening, right? So yeah. that's, whoa. And it's so rare. I, I right. just thought it was normal because I was a little kid. It was just how the world was. And then I started to see that that's not how it is. Hardly but what a gift to like see that, that the, there's the potential for it being yeah. like that. Like that's yes. those seeds that were sown in your perspective at that age, that's huge. And I think that we can take that into other areas of our life as well. Like yeah. the things that we think or thought at a certain age were the way the world worked is only from that perspective of the five-year-old or the six-year-old or the 11 year old yes. right and yes. once we go out into the world so i think that's a lesson on on judgment for us or or pre-judging a situation i think it leaves us open now for an opportunity to recognize that experiences true experiences are what teach yes right? absolutely and and that's what's as little kids and as developing youth it's imprinted on us, but as you're saying, we can we can unlearn what we have learned. Or expand. Or we, exactly. Expand. Because yes. that's still true. I mean, it was still true. You were brought up with women in leadership. It doesn't extract from that. Like, even though it was maybe rare, especially in that environment, right? Yeah. It still is and still was. So there's still value in that and there's still truth in that. And so we get to expand from that place out into the world and say, well, there's probably opportunity for that to grow outside of, you know, my surrounding areas as well. Yeah, absolutely. So how are you taking that now and moving it outside of your area? Well, I've had so many lessons and learnings on, um, especially for girls and women, when does this narrative start for girls, right? When do girls start to question who they really are and and wonder why people in the world around them see them differently than how they perceive themselves and when do girls start to learn how to put on masks and wear these personas to please other people or to meet the expectations of other people and i think seeing a lot of girls and and women in in the last couple of generations including mine uh getting angry about it, which is good, right? Injustice shouldn't happen to us, but then leading from anger instead of learning leading through angry. anger. Yes, being angry, like angry feminism instead of empowered womanhood. So how do we start to even rewrite that narrative of we, yeah, we stand together and, and we wanna change the narrative and the, the numbers of women in leadership but the culture of strong female leader also has to change and be healed, right? So it's about, mm -hmm. it's about being functional for me. It's about, like I said earlier, it's about inspiring people and connecting on an authentic level um, rather than bringing your personal hurt or your personal wound mm -hmm. <laughs> into, into a community or a family or an organization and then pushing and leading out of the wound. Right. So it's about coming back to self, coming back to truth and learning how to listen to the implicit needs of other human beings. And from there, like if you've learned how to listen to yourself, you know how to listen to other people. 
And I think it's at that point that that's huge. That's right, a we just, right we just there. Stepped back into womanhood at that point, and we can be strong and fierce, but still bring the inherent ability to nurture and revitalize and and heal communities, to heal families, to heal generations. Um, out of that womanhood and that essence of femininity. Mm -hmm. And to lead by example, to show mm -hmm. that leading for, coming forth from a position of anger and uh, angry feminism is not as empowered as coming forth from, from leading from the heart and, and strength of, of just the, the kindness, the strength of knowing, the knowingness. Yeah. We can do this. Women are strong. You know, childbirth, they'll figure that one out real quick, you know. Um, so it's, uh, I think there's a something important there that, that to, to lead by example of a, of a, of a strong, of strength, but not anger. Yes. And, well, and the element of choice that has yeah. to to direct that right it's and, not just default mode get get pissed off get angry and go from there but you have to make a choice and you have to do a lot of work <laughs> there is work to be done 24 yeah. 7 to stay in that in that right. consciousness and keep evolving it absolutely one of the things um so we have we have three different anger is our best friend and i don't know that 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 is taught to us right like anger lets us know so we have emotional blocks i work when i work with clients i say it's okay to be angry but that's an emotional block and we really can't do anything with that but what anger is letting you know because anger is our best friend so it's okay you're right samantha it's okay to be angry but anger lets us know that either we feel like our boundaries have been crossed or we've been betrayed in some way mm -hmm. yeah so that's a good lesson. Well, maybe I didn't set my boundaries and now I'm recognizing that something, so they've been crossed yeah. or I feel betrayed. So when we can recognize that and then take that and, and set the intention or put our focus towards what we want to see happen and use that to propel us in that direction. Yes. That's a game changer. And that's, that's coming it. from strength as opposed to anger. But we have to... But we have to recognize that what oh, anger is, is just letting us know, like people are like, you don't be angry because uh -huh. we're taught we shouldn't be, we shouldn't be exactly. angry. We shouldn't act out in anger, but it's okay to have that reminder that, mm, do I need to be more clear on my boundaries? Mm -hmm. Right. We need to get rid of that word. Shouldn't. Yes. We need to get should and shouldn't. That, that should right. Anger is your best yeah. friend. Now, yeah. what do you want to do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how do you help people flip their script on showing, recognizing that their boundaries have been crossed, that they feel betrayed and want to move in a direction that benefits them and complements not just themselves, but the world around them, as opposed to showing up and saying, I'm angry and now and, and showing up and, and being angry, having a tantrum or fighting against something never works. Yeah. That's, that's when you need to flip your script. Mother Teresa will right. teach you that. Right. <laughs> that's yes. when you get more of it, right? Look at the war on drugs. Yeah. They're, they're busy fighting Look against the, fighting the war on drugs. Cancer. Everything's pink. Like yeah. everything's yeah. pink now. Yeah. Fighting against something just gives us more of it. We need to right. we need to work toward what we want. Mm -hmm. Focus on what we want. Yes. So how do you help how how do you see yourself showing up and helping people really maybe take more of that focus in that direction? Yeah, so when I'm working with people, a lot of this starts with storytelling, with narrative medicine, and, and doing a lot of personal cultural anthropology. So looking at the themes and patterns and starting to delineate or differentiate between um, who, who I am, what I think, and what I feel. Because so many girls and women that I work with will say to me, I don't feel anything right now like you said, we're, we're, we shouldn't be angry. Well, we shouldn't be anything. And eventually the messages coming to us uh, tell us that we just don't feel, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't have emotions, then what kind of, like, like you talked about anger, if we're not feeling anything, then what are we making decisions based off of? Probably nothing except expectations, societal, 
conditioning, cultural conditioning. So really, really getting in tune with what are you feeling? And I know some people grow up with that opportunity, but a lot of girls and women don't. Mm -hmm. So learning how to differentiate between I'm thinking this and I feel this and I am this. So I'm not my emotions. I'm not my thought. I'm something totally different. And then looking to see are those three things aligned? And if they're not, that's part of what's causing your dis-ease, the chaos in your mind, the the disruption of peace within your body. Um, and then exploring all kinds of different modalities, whether it's Reiki or yoga or um, Tai Chi or biocognitive techniques, whatever it might be that resonates yeah. with me. Yeah, whatever it is that resonates with that person yeah, <laughs> starting exactly. there right letting it be interdisciplinary interfaith interspirituality based instead of me saying you have to do this modality to heal let them explore and find what's best for them in that moment and who knows maybe in a year or a month or 10 years they'll come back to a different modality that we've experienced together but really starting by exploring the inner world of that individual person and seeing how the collective has imposed on that person, um, but but also seeing from our culture, what's the good that we want to take with and what's the bad that we want to leave behind. Mm -hmm. Stripping it down and just getting back to who are you? And well, who do you want to be? Not what do you want to be, but who do you want to be? Right, and what, 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 what characteristics do you want to have as the star exactly. of your own show? Yes, yes. Right, rewrite to rewrite the script, basically. Yeah, yeah. What are your archetypes? Mm -hmm. What's the quality and essence of each of those archetypes? And what's the function? We what just are you had, do with them? yes, we had a guest. Um, oh, now I'm, uh, one of my things is I'm getting better at remembering names, especially guests' names, but I have it written down too in my book. I wrote him down and it was, he was having a conversation, David, I think his name was Dave, and he wrote this book. But anyway, he was having a conversation with his daughter. And this is a great conversation. And it reminds me of what you're saying, Samantha, is um, he sat down with his teenage daughter and said, you know, let's, let's, who do you, who do you respect? Like, who do you look up to as a role model in your life? And what, 10 to 12 characteristics does this person have yeah. that you respect and look up to, <laughs> right? And so finding those qualities maybe in someone else mm -hmm. first and saying, I'd like to emanate these qualities from the inside out, yes. right? And breaking them down to maybe three out of the 12, you got to start small because that's mm -hmm. like a lot, but, <laughs> um, and breaking them down that way. And I just thought that was like fascinating. I'm like, I'm doing that. Like I have the list. <laughs> I'm like yeah. thinking people because it's, it, there's always an opportunity to, 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 to take something new and, and make it your own and yeah. start to emanate the, those qualities, mm -hmm. especially Absolutely. if you just don't know. Yeah, right. There's plenty of qualities out there that we can look up to. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So I like to make this a little interactive. It's, we have a, a few minutes. So if I was coming to you and saying, I don't know who I am, because sometimes I don't. Like I have my moments, I'm sure. My 10-year-old shows up and goes, who are we again? Or my 12-year-old would be like, really? Like, what are we doing? So would, what if I what would be one thing or something that I could apply maybe in my life just as a as a starting point? Is there something that you would like suggest uh, yes. to one of your clients <laughs> that we can one maybe of, share? Yeah, absolutely. One of it it sounds kind of funny, but one of my favorite exercises I've ever done with one of my mentors and that girls and women I work with really enjoy is exploring the poetics of self. So Ooh, right, the poetic of like, if you don't know who you are, then let's explore first who you are not. So let's identify who you are by identifying first who you aren't. So you can do that with yourself, like put your name on a piece of paper and around it, just start writing all of the, all of the things or qualities or characteristics that you are not. And from there, starting to delineate out of that, well, then what are you? Who are you? Where are you from? Girl, you're helping them flip their script. It's yeah. exactly the same thing. I'm like, if you know what you don't want, exactly. use that first to figure out what you do want. Because yeah. otherwise, you wouldn't even care. 
Exactly. And keep making, keep on growing that list of what and who you are not, because it's mm -hmm. going to help keep yeah. setting bigger boundaries, greater limits, expecting more respect and creating a bigger, more vibrant voice and presence. Right. So like you right. just said, to know who we aren't helps us identify at a much deeper level who we are to the point where you can do like uh, go into this Oakham's razor concept of cutting away the fat and the excess until you get one sentence of this is who I am. Girl, I call it bumper sticker speak. If you can sit yes. it on a bumper sticker, then you've gotten to the root of it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> All the other stuff is excess. Yep. Yep. So starting with the poetics of who you are, just dance around it for a while mm -hmm. until you feel comfortable landing and really honing in and identifying who is it that you really are. Thank you. I'm going to do that with my 11 year old or my 15 year old. <laughs> yes. Today. You're welcome. <laughs> so it's called dancing poetic. Is that what you said? Oh, yeah. I mean, you can call it whatever you want, but it's I like really, that. Though. The, yeah. The poetics of exploring self. Right. Where it's like identifying what is love. It's hard. So that's why so much of poetry is trying to describe what love is. So you can do the same thing with yourself then. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's you're amazing. amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you're very like centered Thank and you. grounded and clear. Mm -hmm. So I can lots see of work, right? <laughs> lots of work. <laughs> I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> My 15 year old wants to be like you. <laughs> so I would... go ahead, Barbara, uh, Deborah. Uh, Samantha, how did you um, in, uh, come together here with, with Blue Talks? Because I don't think we, we sorted that out in the beginning. How no, did we didn't. Together? We'll do that as a wraparound, the sandwich. Uh, yeah, so I've been working with an amazing woman named Rochelle Babbler since May of last year, and she's been helping me navigate how to get to a TEDx stage and how to do podcast outreach. Um, so she referred me to Corey, it must've been the beginning of January and I got on a zoom call with him and maybe 20 minutes into the call, I just, I had made the decision, like this community is for me. I'm going to be part of the next book. I'm going to be a speaker in this world. Cause that's what I've been waiting. Like I've been waiting for this kind of community for so long navigating healthcare and education and all of these other very bureaucratic systems where if you have an ounce of compassion and spirituality and creativity, you are just looked at like you're insane, right? Because <laughs> why would we want compassion in healthcare and education? Heaven forbid. It's medical care. It's medical care. Yeah, it's sick care. Right? It's sick a business. Graduation. It's, it's not even care. It's a business. Yeah. yeah. So and it's medical. Yeah, so it's it's just been the end of 2021 saying I, I'm done with all of the junk from my past. Um, and this this new year, just in seven short weeks, has brought me When some, did you hear? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Some amazing new connections and new friends and deep learning experiences that are totally catalyzing who I want to be in the world, how I want to show up. Mm. So it's beautiful. been beautiful. Yeah. Well, we're sure glad that we're sure glad that Rochelle brought you to Corey and who's now brought you to here to us. She's awesome, Rochelle. Yeah. Yes. I think she was on, I think she was on our stage or whatever way back when we first started this, like yeah. two years ago. I can't believe it's only been almost been two years. Okay, so I will I want to give you an opportunity to help us share one of your mind seeds with with our viewers um are you familiar with what a mind seed is mm -mm. okay so in flip your script i have a lot of analogies with like the seeds of thought you sow grow yes. so the whole cultivating and fertilizing it's very like mm -hmm. farming to me so we have thought weeds and thought weeds take up a lot of space mm -hmm. in our every day in our every moment yes. and uh, they, and they can grow. But here's the thing about pulling a weed and you as farmers know that when you pull a weed, if you don't fill that space with something, somehow new weeds can grow. If you're not intentional with planting a seed that you really want to have grow, um, weeds find their way. So when we flip our script, 
we pull thought weeds, right? We recognize thought weeds through AFT. It's easy like to pull them and they're like gone. But now what? We have to start to restore with something. So I always love to ask our guests, can you share a thought or a perspective with our guests that when they start to flip mm -hmm. their script and pull some thought weeds that they could plant that in their life sort of without like a neutral seed or a neutral thought yeah that will help them grow and uh, into more of who they want to be and and help them grow a life they love a little bit more absolutely um so i th i think immediately of a phrase action beyond words in latin it's acta non verba and um the whole concept of when you are choosing consciously to flip your script, you're learning, you're retraining yourself. And to just think about it is not integrating it. So you have to live it beyond what you're saying and thinking. You got to feel it. You got to do it. You've got to become it so that you can make a big mistake and learn even more. Or so you can experience a huge success and really integrate that at a deeper level. So I love that. Yeah. So action beyond words. Yes. What are you doing to actually grow and integrate and change? Because we can learn and we can read. And that's part of where I came from is I just loved to study all of this stuff. And at a certain mm -hmm. point, I like, you know, you get the universal slap in the face saying you're not really making a change, though. You're just thinking about it. And it feels good to think about it. It feels so like, you're doing, do a next? like you're doing something, but I'm yes. doing something. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. Right. And now you are. Look at you. Yeah. Thank you. You're actually doing, you're doing it. You're taking yes. action and you've showed up and you've made a huge impact here today on thank the stage you. for me and my life. So I thank you so much. Yeah. Um, thank you for creating the space. Away. Oh, you're so welcome. It's, it's, yeah. I love it. I love it. I'm like, I should just toast all these amazing people. Like, maybe that's what I'm going to do. Just call me out. Because I just get to meet all of you. I get to hang out with so. I mean, and it's just been an amazing, amazing week. And, and you're lending to, to the, growing that vibe here. Yeah. Um, so much appreciated. Where can we find you again best, before we go? Yeah. And then also, before I forget, because I think I forgot the last time, put it in the comments. Like, Corey's mm -hmm. posting it on the Blue Talks Flip Your Script Experience group okay. and Facebook. LinkedIn, YouTube. So in the comments, if you put your contact information, then people who go back and watch the replay as well can find you. Perfect. Yes. The best place to find me is at my website, which is my name, samanthalouise.co. And explore, get to know me there. If you, if you want to connect elsewhere, that's fine. But my website, just super simple, samanthalouise.co. Thank you so much. Yes, thank for you both. For sharing your time and you your You are space. amazing. Thank you. Yeah, very much wise, so. Wise, I think, beyond your years. Thank in, you. In a big way. So yeah. thank you for sharing your wisdom and your knowledge and your vision with us because I think you're destined for great things. Yeah, I'm excited to see how you... Uh, how you bloom and blossom in all of this. <laughs> yes. I'm so glad we're all part of the same community. It's so much fun. I agree. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you. Whew. That was great. Joey Joyful in the house. That was fast. Oh. Hi, Joey. You, does your shirt say be joyful? Be joy. Oh, be joy. I can't see. You got, you got a big black thing right in the center, you know. Yeah, it's my microphone. Sorry about that. No, it's all good. It's the, it's, yeah, it's the, the we need, we need the sound, you know, we have to have the good sound. Yes. You got it. Thank you, you very much for having here. me. I'm glad to be here. I am glad that you're here with us. Oops, I just got a call. I'll call it back. So, Joey Joyful. How are you? I'm well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joyful. We're joyful. Oh, <laughs> I love it. So, where are you being joyful from in this world? I'm today, in the right Montreal now. region, Canada. I'm north shore of Montreal in a small town called Saint Eustache. And nice Laurentians so uh, close to nature I have a cottage up north here I'm going to be living in very shortly and uh, yeah Montreal Canada I love it so we were just talking with Randy Brown who's RVing all over and my fiance well actually this is pre-fiance but I was still <laughs> RVing um, oops but anyway so <laughs> we uh, RV through Canada and um, I love doing like unique RV RVing up 
more like driveway surfing and hip camps and finding fun, cool places. Yeah. I had a little 19 foot motor home and tour, I think it's called tour something. It's, it's the Canadian hip camp. And we were able to stay actually in someone's driveway in like wow. Montreal, in Montreal, there's a stadium right outside of like, not there's a big stadium that I think it's a train hub or a subway hub that takes you to downtown. Uh, well, there's Berry Ucam, but uh, Berry Ucam, which is like the the, the hub of the uh, metro station in Montreal. But maybe you're talking about the Olympic Stadium, Montreal Olympic Stadium. Well, it's we we caught we caught the train there to take us into downtown. You could buy a pass, like a train yeah. pass or whatever. So yeah. anyway, it's kind of the Queens. I'm from New York. I would the way that the it looked like Queens, New York, and these driveways were really tiny, but this family opened up this little tiny driveway to us, hooked us up with water. And we literally were able to RV in the middle of Montreal. It was like one of the most amazing experiences um, to have because you don't think about RVing and staying no. in a downtown, like an urban environment like that. Yeah, we tend to be very um, accueillant in French that we, we receive very well. We love, we love just having people over for a coffee or anything. So yeah it was beautiful and it didn't matter that we didn't really speak french i don't know what this whole talk is is that like oh they don't like american you know, english speaking people i'm sorry not for me it was no. amazing all the way around we had an awesome experience so but, but that's like the metaphor of the guy that's coming up to a city a town and he there's an old man waiting at the town and uh the, the stranger arrives and he says how are the people in this town here where i come from you know they're they're bitchy they're complaining and they don't really enjoy uh, sharing and they say oh you're gonna find pretty much the same type of people here and then there's this other traveler that arrives a bit later and he says, excuse me, sir, I'd like to know what type of people are in this town. And uh, but how are the people where you come from? Oh, they're, they're really welcoming. They're, they're easygoing and they're always joyful. You're going to find the same type of people here. <laughs> so if you found good people, open hearted, it's probably because that's what that's who you are, Lise. I'm going to tell you something. This is my this is my motto. It's always been a motto. Everyone's amazing. Every yeah. single person I've ever met doesn't matter where I've been in the world and I've traveled all over the world has been absolutely extraordinary. And I only wish if, if I, I always say that you're going to find what you look for. Yeah, definitely. A hundred percent. That's, that's your hypnosis and it's a hypnosis that's serving you. So why not follow it? Because it's giving you a lot of grace and uh, happiness in your life. Wow. So, and if you're finding a lot of angry, frustrated people, me, you might want to flip your script and start to say that yeah. everyone I meet is, I always say I'm a magnet for amazing yeah. and magnificent. I just got this book here, Change Your Luck, and it all starts with starting to believe that you're lucky. Change, and, and I love your flip your script. I, lo I love that title. I love the, the way that you bring it about because that's really what it is about, what your thoughts, and I was listening in before leaving. Uh, mm -hmm. Before the the, the pre previous guest and uh, how you take away, uh, remove the weeds, and you know, plant a seed, and that's beautiful. I love uh, that's that's hypnosis at its best. So I guess that that's your gig. A little bit. That I mean, <laughs> joyful. Be joyful is my is my hypnosis. Uh, that the, the persona that I wear every day when I wake up, and uh, essentially, I always tell people the hypnosis starts uh, way before that you actually close your eyes with me. It starts when you wake up in the morning and that you had this thought that something was unsatisfactory in your life and you wanted to change because you are, you're always hypnotizing yourself. And I'm actually not in the business of hypnotizing people. I'm in the business of deprogramming and dehypnotizing people from what's actually causing them to come back into the same pattern and unsatisfactory program that they're in. Recognize release and restory, baby. <laughs> exactly. Release and restory. Exactly that. Right. And so I happen to use EFT for that because it's it seems like it's a one stop shop and I could teach somebody else to do it. But what is your modality for helping them deprogram, as you say? Uh, mostly I do use hypnosis, but I also I, I've uh, recently come upon this program uh, or not a program. It's more of a methodology called the uh, Socratic method. Essentially, I've heard of it, but I'm not so yeah. familiar. Socratic method, I invite people on Socratic walks. And essentially, Socrates, you know, we philosopher, Greek philosopher of age Oh, old. Socrates, got it. Yeah, and uh, when he was standing on stage and he was talking about his uh, wisdom and his philosophy, and uh, he noticed that the students were just like, what's the answer? Tell us the answer. He would say, let's go for a walk, you know. And uh, as you're walking side by side, there's something that happens that you're no longer confronted with the person in front of you. It's not a confrontation anymore. It's a collaboration. And as you're walking side by side, especially in nature, the Japanese art of Shinrin Yuku, so uh, forest bathing, there's something that happens that unconsciously, since you're moving past objects, it's as if you're moving, moving past blockages inside. 
And with a gentle inquiry, Socrates was able to help his students bring about their own wisdom. So that way, if the information is coming from outside, it's integrated automatically. If it's coming from, from inside, I mean, if it's coming from outside, you have to sort of capture it and understand it and reflect upon it and notice how it, you're feeling inside of it and how does that resonate. But if you're able to, when you're able to come, bring it about from inside, it's already yours. And then automatically the change happens. So the Socratic method, I don't have the answer. I could only show people the bridges I crossed and the methods I use and maybe the practices I encourage. But ultimately, it's finding their own wisdom and the next step on their journey. You find when people say, well, I think. And I'm like, if you think, you know. Because if you just think something, do you think somebody outside of you is going to know it? That's going to have an answer and say, this is what I know for you. Just assume this is the first, this is the one and only assumption that you can make. And I guarantee you, you will not be an ass after doing it. Is yeah. that if you think something, it's your knowing. Yeah. Do you agree 100%. that you find that? That when people are like a little bit scared to to own their to own their no, they sort of I think that this 100%. is what it is. Do you find that? Well, a little bit like you were saying earlier in regards to the 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 healthcare system is the the the, the sickness medical. system, right? It's medical. It's selling medical. drugs. But the 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 teaching the education system is the same thing. You have a, a bunch of heads behind desks, and you're trying to fill them up. And the person in front has the answer. And if you don't give the answer, the person wants, regardless if you change like the methodology, if you find the answer spontaneously, you have the right answer, but they don't care about that. They want you to follow steps and, uh, or else you have to repeat it until you get it right. So we're not teaching you to find wisdom inside of you. That's why people are afraid to own it. And, uh, to, to jump, jump off what you were saying. If you think, I like to say, if you're trying to convince some yourself or somebody of something, it's because you're not convinced yourself. Well, then, yeah, then there's that piece of it, that side note of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to get back to something like more personal because we just jumped right in, Joey. I know. <laughs> <Joyful. laughs> and, and I can do that too. I'm like, okay. So you're in Montreal. Yep. Do you come with family? Like what's your, you know, we like to know a little bit more. I'm a yeah. father of three. Uh, my mm -hmm. oldest is 24. Uh, my oh. daughter is uh, 20 and my youngest is 16. See, I would never have guessed. I would have thought you were old enough to like maybe have a girlfriend that you've been with for, you know, five years or something. Well, Joy has that aspect of making me younger every year. I'm actually 47. Wow, looking good. I mean, that's, yeah. You. So, and so you just don't, you just don't know, you know, how old somebody is. So, you never know. Um, but now that changes everything, right? So now we have a little bit more of a perspective of yeah. how, how Joy can, you know, change the look. I'm 26 years with the same wife, the same person, mother of my three children. And we've built, we've been through challenges and struggles and we've built stronger and uh, we're stronger than ever now. And uh, I have just recently incorporated my business, Joy Joyful Inc. as uh, a newborn three year week old baby. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, the same day I became president of two companies, the Be Human Club, which is the, all about this, these shirts and we could get into it later. And uh, Joey Joyful Inc., which is all about helping uh, people uh, move past their patterns and programming and to jump into their, 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 their power. And actually, I have this mission that I'm, I, I feel as if there's a golden age of humanity. We're on the cusp. Or actually, it, it's already here. We just need to raise our vibration to reach it. And there are millions of people awakening to it every day. And there are thousands that are leading these people into the golden age. And out of the thousands, there will be dozens that we be the kings and true leaders of this movement. And I am here to speak to the dozens, to help them give them courage and confidence that their mission is worthy and they are worthy of their mission. So you're like the king of everything. I got I like it here. It. This is my little king. See? Every I'm day. Into my psychic abilities. I didn't even know you had that there. It's not like we talked beforehand. This is no. not scripted. No script. <laughs> You do have abilities. You do have sacred abilities. I've been listening into you. I've been looking into you and you do have sacred abilities, Lise. That's for sure. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, and, you know, people are like, oh, you know, what are you? I'm like, I'm just the queen of everything. So I was kind of joking, but it's fun because, you know, you get to be, and it's not, you know, I know, Deborah, you keep saying it's all about, you know, oh, yeah, I know we know it's all about you, but I, I think that you have, we have to, we have to lead by example. Yeah. So it's a look at me. You can have this attitude to attitude or, or look yep. at my, look at my, like people are like, you have the best life, you know, ha like, oh my God, I want your life. I'm like, look, yep. I'm living a look at my life. You can have this to life. 
Yeah. I'm showing you what's possible. Definitely. I think that that's so important for all of us who show up for others who are ready yeah. to show up in a place that it's like, yeah, look at me. You can have this too. Yeah. And it's not I about it. me. It's at not about you. It's, it's not about me. It's about the mission. And as soon as it becomes about the mission, you move aside. And all of a sudden, you just become the avatar or the funnel or the whatever, the callus to receive the sacred divine God, whatever it is. But it's all about the mission. And then it's I wake up at 4.44 every day. And it's intentional. And I have an, I have an alarm to wake me gently up. And to jump into the day with the, the heart chakra because four, you know, the fourth, fourth I chakra. I see your chakras behind you. Yeah, they're right there. Right in the green. Start in the middle. Start with the heart. And uh, it's an angel number as well. So 444, I love the repeating the angel numbers. They've been following me forever. And 11, when you, 11 is my jam twice a day, every day. I'm like, well, that's what we got twice a day, right? Here it so, is. You were going to say something. I'm sorry we cut you off. That's okay. I was going to say that you, you know, I'm teasing because I'm fully right there with you. I, I absolutely love, love the exuberance and the love for life and the, yeah. the confidence that you have and just the, how you embrace that's, you know, and, and you too, Joey, I, I'm, I'm a fellow Canadian from Western Canada. I'm in Alberta. Wonderful. So, My, uh, I have family in Alberta, actually. Ah, good. Yeah, good. yeah, Calgary. Uh, you know, and I'm 30 minutes from Calgary. So <laughs> maybe we'll meet someday. Oh, wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Do y'all, let's see if you know his family. I love this whole game. Oh. You know, it's not so far, these three degrees of separation or six or whatever. So my best friend, one of my best friends in the world is Jessica Foley. We have never met in person, but uh, she's a dear, uh, dear friend to me, a heart, a heartfelt soul that I helped uh, coach through uh, some uh, cannabis addiction. And uh, we developed a friendship. And now, uh, yeah, we're very close. We talk often. And my brother, the Kaz family, Martin Kaz. I've heard of the Kaz name. Yeah. Joanna Kaz, Samantha Kaz, CJ Kaz. And uh, yeah, he's uh, currently working in the oil fields. He used to be a trucker. And uh, they have a lot of art uh, abilities, Samantha and Joanna. And uh, CJ is... Uh, Right now, she's working in retail, I believe. But uh, yeah, beautiful family. Be joyful shirts. Be, uh, if they have one, sorry. I said if, if she's in retail, or she's not in manufacturing, she's just in retail. No, yeah, she just works in retail manager, I believe. And, I love uh, those be joyful shirts. I do too. Yeah, we those have, are we, so cool. We have tons of them. We have be love. We have be human. We have be peace. Be you. Uh, we have be divine. So uh, we're we're creating the uh, like it, like like Gandhi said you know be the change you want to see in the world we're we're all about wearing the change you want to see in the world, and you wear the values that are you hold dear to your heart. So that's uh, one I of the see companies. That as a Yum Lifeline. I have a, my our umbrella company is Yum Life Ventures, and it's all about living the umame of your own life. That's I love sweet. that. I love that. So we're always looking to partner with companies that could be part of our Yum Life collection. And I see Be Joyful or, or the Bee Line as a Yum Life line. So we, we will have. The, we call the it the Beware. Line. The Beware. Beware. W E A R, right? Yeah. Beware. Exactly. Beware. Perfect. I like the whimsical witty. <laughs> have you always been Joey Joyful or did something sort of inspire you or help you? I have to say I've always been joyful, but uh, I, I haven't embraced it so much as I have in the past few, uh, I guess, weeks or months. It's only, it's very, it's very want, recent. Is this your maiden voyage? Uh, probably. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. I would actually believe it is. I, I made a many attempts like I was, uh, I, I worked in the corporate world for forever. Doing? Uh, Air Canada was a manager, crew scheduling. So flight attendants, when they have issues, they call us. And uh, putting out fires. And uh, I had many dreams to bring mindfulness, because I'm also a mindfulness teacher. And I had many dreams of bringing mindfulness into Air Canada. 30,000 employees affecting at minimum five people. That's 150 people I can affect if I just teach every single employee how to be mindful every day. And um, I've always had these illusions of grandeur, and now it's the reality of grandeur. So it's not an illusion anymore. I'm actually making I the call changes. It a vision. You're a visionary. Totally. In a world of limitless possibilities. And Air Canada, well, uh, they have certain goals and visions and values and missions, and uh, mine did not align with theirs. So I uh, mm. hit my head against the wall a lot. And uh, I really, when I hit the, my head against the wall and I feel I'm not satisfying people, I'm a, I used to be a people pleaser. I overextend and I become hyperactive and impulsive. So uh, impulsivity made it that my boss uh, found me threatening. 
and uh, he was uh, disciplining me when the pandemic hit. I was actually on, on, uh, I was on leave, like stay home until we conclude this investigation type of thing. And uh, no, no, and, and I think he, it was warranted. I'm not, I'm not dishing them. He was just doing his job, and it's, it was warranted actually. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't doing my job properly. Anyway. You weren't being compliant. I wasn't being compliant, and I was actually uh, willfully going against the rules. So they were telling me, "Don't send out emails to to senior VPs," and I was sending out VP. Like I, I send out twice as much. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me no. You're not going to tell me what to do. What age was that, Joey? Yeah. What age? What age was that, Joey? Because that's like that's what we were just talking about with Randy. Was like we have different ages that show up and make certain decisions. Ah, that was probably five, six years old. Probably. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. that was a very precocious Joey then for that age. I'm thinking more teenager, like defiant. I wasn't or I'm going to do it anyway. No, you weren't. You were like, but I want to do it. Yeah, yeah. I just want to help. I want to help. Let me help. So anyway, a uh, pandemic hit and uh, they offered packages to managers. So I took a package. I left because it was better for everybody, better for me, better for my family, better for them. I had a year's salary to, to, to flip my switch and I didn't do it properly. Your script. I mean, my it script. could have been a switch, but that's okay. A script. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so I, I attempted to uh, enter a company that was bringing health and wellness into corporations. I thought that I was, that was it. But I, I came with the same ideology and I came with the same hyperactive impulsivity and I sabotaged myself again. And it happened, that was probably the sixth time I was sabotaging myself. And uh, I finally realized that the only, um, the common denominator was always me. Well, our vibration is where we last left it. Exactly. So when we leave a job because we're unhappy or certain things are happening, our vibrations where we last left it. Yeah. So just like you, you wake up in the morning and you're joyful. Yeah. You go to bed at night and you're joyful. Your vibrations where you last left it. And, it, and you can see it in you. I love yeah. it. So yeah. true, Deborah. So true. But I just, I'm, I have a, you keep saying I sabotaged myself again. Yeah. Yeah. It was a my pattern. It was a repeating pattern uh, because my joyfulness was sort of sabotaged when I was young always been hypersensitive, always been able and empath to feel people. And uh, my mother, uh, she had to give her daughter away when uh, she was born at 19, out of wedlock, a relationship. So they had uh, an hour, I think she was allowed to have her baby and mm. before she gave her away. And uh, my mother, I've known her, uh, I guess, depressed for her whole life. I mean, hiding it well, obviously doing her best and raising three boys. And uh, she did a fantastic job. And uh, when I was born, there was no, there was no uh, uh, resonance before. They didn't know I was a boy or a girl. They thought I was a girl. Like I was Melanie before I was born. I was the replacement child of the daughter she lost. So when I was born, finally, they called me Joseph, which is too old for a baby. So my mom called me Joey all the time. And uh, I was her sunshine. I was her joy. Aww. And, and <laughs> yet I was hypersensitive and I felt that she was depressed. So I felt that I was not enough at a very young age. And very quickly, I started overextending myself as a people pleaser to be able to help more. So I studied. My mind searched for the haves and the do's that I needed to accomplish to be able to help people be happy. And certifications, $100,000, I guess, in trainings and uh, all of it. I did all of it, and it still didn't work. I still didn't feel satisfied because people were still sad. And I had to realize at one point that that wasn't my responsibility anymore. What a relief that was, I'm sure. Oh, and I have to say, it only happened like November last year. Still a relief, doesn't matter when it happened. Still a relief. And ever since, I left fear behind that I was not enough. I've embodied my kingly energy. <laughs> I used to be a warrior spirit fighting for to defend everybody. Now I'm a kingly energy. I feel as if I have a kingdom to, 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 to care for. And grow and grow and, and like you were speaking of removing the weeds and planting the seeds and sowing the seeds of love sowing the seeds of love there you go yeah and uh and uh, it's been an expansion ever since and uh it's it's really going quickly i'm making a lot of beautiful heart-centered people connections i'm bringing about uh, actual change in the life of pe lives of people in my life the life of my family and I'm, uh, I'm following, I did, I did some psychotropics. I don't know where we are in regards to this. That really helped flip. Say whatever script. you want. 
I'm curious. Can you tell me about that? Because I'm I'm on a journey that I'm sort of spring, sprinkling the information, and in. I'm not yeah. giving too much detail. But it, and I know because I am I am the queen of I know that our thoughts and our emotions we're all connected. It's all connected. All of it. We have been given such a gift to be able to direct our life through yeah. the way that we show up vibrationally. And yes, the thoughts come in and the experiences, the emotions that happen from experiences. And I, that's one of the things that keeps coming up for me. So I'm really curious to know a little bit more about that. Well, we could definitely bring this conversation outside later, Lise. We can, but I mean, just... Or here, I, I can share definitely what helped me. Not too much detail because I don't know what the rules and regulations are, but... For, well, I mean, it's... For, whatever platform we're on. Yeah. Plant medicine essentially is a non-specific amplifier. There you go. Same as hypnosis, same as meditation, same as gratitude. Whatever you're bringing into the experience, the plant medicine will amplify. And I brought into the experience a lot of fear in regards to career building, professional career, showing up as myself, uh, financial issues and safety. So we're looking at the chakra system. The first three here, Root, Especially baby, the last root. One. I'm going through my root right now. I got some big root stuff going on. Believe yeah, it or so not. <laughs> old, but still there. It's roots. all about safety. <laughs> roots are old. Roots are definitely old. They're deep and they're hard to change. It takes a while to get to the place of change. But once you change it, change happens in an instant. Mm -hmm. So it's building. So it's reaching down to the last root, I guess. And once you get, when you touch that last root and you just move it by one degree, poof, everything changes. Yep. Because if you, if you think of a, a boat leaving harbor and you give it the wrong heading by one degree, after a day or two or 10, it doesn't really make a difference, right? You hardly notice. But after a 30 or 60 day voyage, you're not even on the same continent on, on arrival. Or 50 something years. It's crazy. <laughs> and, and what your mind perceives to be real has the same effect as what is real and, and because perfect, it's all an illusion it's all an illusion <laughs> but sometimes it's not even the conscious mind it's the subconscious mind that's already operating it's like you don't even know what's up but it is and it's more powerful than and i would argue it's always the subconscious mind it's never the yeah. conscious well you know but we like to think a little bit you know but i yeah. hear you i totally get you this nice. makes us feel in control if we yeah. don't give it all to the subconscious. subconscious. We just don't want to have a little bit of control. And, and psychedelic plants, plant medicine, they help you get to that point where you have to surrender. Because in mm -hmm. meditation, you could always open your eyes, right? And any, any conscious a CBT, you could always stop doing the, the treatment. I had meditation this morning. My cat needed to go, well, but then, now I'm like, all right, Paul, you know, come back. Yeah, so I get it. EFT, super efficient. You stop tapping. If you're fed up, you stop tapping. EMDR, you stop moving the eyes. There's always a way to stop doing the thing that's bringing up the emotion that is too tough to deal with. Plant medicine, you're, you just went onto a roller coaster and it's not stopping. And you, it's strapped you down and you open your eyes or close, doesn't matter. You're going full speed ahead, up and down, upside down. And you have to go through. So it, the only way to go through is to surrender totally, completely to the fear, to the emotion, the disgust, the guilt, the shame, whatever it is. Surrender totally because emotions, all they want to do is travel through. And we're afraid to, 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 to experience it because we were taught very young, Shh, stop crying, it's not time. We were not allowed to express emotions. So we feel as if we need to stop expressing emotions to be loved, to be cared for, to be validated, to be incorporated into the group. And think about, think about, that's a phone. Let me just turn that off quick. Is that your cricket? <laughs> I love that ring. It's a cricket. Turn that off. And sometimes messages come in that you have to listen to. <laughs> All right. We're to or turn off. As message the just came be. to us right now. Come on. Obviously, it was a message for all of us. I hope it's it was a beautiful good. message. It's a beautiful message. When you're stuck in hell, why would you stop there? Push through, get out of it. Mm -hmm. And that's, I, I used to believe that when I, I, I got stuck with a rotten apple, that was the emotion I didn't like. I, if I hit it very far away in my sock drawer, it would get rid of it. But what happens to the rotten apple if you stop, you don't, if you push it away? 
I have a similar analogy. It's like if you go to if you go apple picking or orange picking because I'm in Florida and you go to this orchard and they're like, well, we don't have an empty um, bushel bucket for you, but here's a half full bucket. Some of them are rotten, but just put the good ones on top. Yeah. That's to me, that's an affirmation. Affirmations are trying to shove these positive thoughts on yeah. top of the old rotten beliefs and it doesn't work because they all turn rotten. Yeah. So I, I, get, I get that analogy. I love it. I often use the acronym AAR, you know, like AAR, I think that's a, a, a machine gun, but if you really want to machine gun your way through it, you first have to become aware that there's a situation happening that you're not satisfied. What's not an satisfied. AAR? I believe it's a machine gun. I, I, I think I just connected with that. But if you want to really shoot your way through it, because sometimes some people feel they have to fight their way. Well, first you have to become aware that there's something that you don't agree with that's disagreeable, unsatisfactory in your life. You become aware of it. Well, as soon as you become aware of it, you need to accept it. You acknowledge this is here. Because if you don't acknowledge it, it's like a GPS putting in the, in the address where you want to go, but you don't turn on location services. Right. How is how's the GPS going to find a way to get there? So you're aware you're not at where you want to be. You accept the GPS location where you are currently. And then you realize one action to get out of the situation where you are. And you start moving forward. And you know what? You're going to course correct along the way because that's what Google does all the time. It recalculates every time you take a wrong turn. As long as you keep that destination in your eyesight, you're going to be able to find a way through. And all you need to do is get through it. So and the road is, the road is not straight. It's, it's not, not straight. straight. It's, there's, there's all kinds of things in the way and you got to maneuver around it. So, you know, it's we people think, oh, I'm coming from this spot. I'm just going to go straight forward. Yeah. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> I can I make an RV like analogy. Too, yeah. An, an RV analogy is we never take the straight road. That is boring. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot more fun to take the back roads in an RV, though, than it is to take the back roads in life sometimes. I'll tell sure. you that. Like, we have a lot less bumps on the back roads in an RV than we have on the back roads of life. But I agree. it is a lot more adventurous for sure. Yeah. So push yourself through. That's where growth happens. You know, it's all about the discomfort, the journey and all that. But ultimately, it's uh, it's developing the habits, the systems that are going to help you get there. Because the destination, honestly, is not even important. Because that destination, if you reach it and you have nothing else besides that destination in mind, you're going to get there. You're going to be at a precipice. You're going to be like, OK, what do I do now? I got here. Right. Totally uneventful. Yeah. I'm here. Because where you are today is where you wanted to be five years ago. And you, you made it and you're still unsatisfied. You're like, what do I do now? So when I embodied the joyfulness of who I am because I left fear behind and I allowed the safety, you know, if we're coming back to this here, the safety is about really the financial, the environment, the love, feeling, the sense of uh, belonging. So it's the, uh, the five basic needs of uh, Maslow. Your clothes, your house, your fed, uh, your, your sense of sense of belonging. And you could actually have the necessary tools to start developing yourself because that's a basic need, developing yourself. Then you can move up into the rest of the chakra system. But you have to work on this, the foundation first. And you have to be honest about the things that are making you fearful and unsatisfied and unbalanced. Seek the necessary help and become responsible. The ability to respond to whatever is happening in your life. You're responsible for your life even though, you're not, even though it's not your fault where you are because of the programming and conditioning. And I recently learned uh, a definition of how to become an adult. Tell me. Which I or guess I... Not, it's not just about me. Tell everyone, Joy. And, tell I guess, everyone. and I guess I just became an adult very recently. It's when you become responsible for the dissatisfaction you have in your life. And you stop counting on someone to come and save you. Because I, let me tell you a secret. Ain't nobody coming to save you. You're alone in even this. Even if they do. And even if they do... You have to be in a position to receive it. Yeah. And I right? used to we be that person. That. I used to be that person that saved everybody, even though they didn't want to be saved. And uh, I became responsible for them. Because uh, imagine you find a crippled person on the side of the street and he's begging for food. And you're like, oh, this is, un this is it cannot be. And wh how, what injustice. And you grab him, you put him on your back and you bring him somewhere else. And you give him a job and you do this. And then you drop him there and you leave. He's still crippled. And he just, he just slumped to the floor. And he's like, yeah, but I had something good going on over there. Like I was making 150 bucks a day. 
bring bring me back there. Like I can't I can't deal I with can't this. Ask you to put me on your back. Yeah. So you it's, become responsible for his life. It's a huge relief. A huge relief. You know, and 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 when when we realize that it's really not our job or our responsibility or even to put our focus when we look at something that that doesn't resonate with us if we the only thing that the only reason we want something to change is because we don't like how we feel when we look at it yeah i don't exactly. like how this makes me feel so i need this to change i need my government to change i need religion to change i need the medical industry to change i need russia and the ukraine to change right now that's a huge big thing right now i look at it and i don't like it because it looks like this to me our kids, I have so many cli clients that come to me, parents, and I work with children of all ages, inner children, outer children, whatever. And they're like, my child's doing this and this and this. And I'm like, well, first of all, we have to work together for a couple of sessions first. And the first thing I will ask them is, so let me just be clear. I want to know this. So you're asking me to work with your child because you don't like how you feel right now when you look at him or her. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> Fix so let me kid. ask you again. So you want me to help, you want me to work with, you want me to change your child basically is what you're asking me to do because you don't like how you feel when you're around him or her, or you look at him or her. And we can apply that. I mean, the world is our child. So That's why do we feel. want something to change? And I've let my, I set myself free for that a long time ago and people think I'm cold or my head's in the sand or I don't care. I actually really do care because I'm showing up to make, to be the change, to create the change, to create the space for people yeah. to show up when they're ready to change. That's where my energy, that's where all of our energy is best spent. Instead of mm -hmm. looking at something and saying, oh, I don't like that. And this is awful. And this needs to change. And and I actually no. celebrate you because that takes a lot of courage, Lise, to say that. A lot of courage to say that. And it and it's not even a spent emotion or energy. It's an investment because now that person is going to start celebrating their child, fixing their wounds, and they're going to stop the generational curses and all of that with her or him. And then the child is going to be able to grow from that point. And that child is going to be a child of light that is going to help other people grow because he's, he was allowed to show up as himself, herself themselves and then right. the child is so i still coach the child into being the best version of themselves because they probably heard for so many so long that there's something wrong with them and they need to be fixed and why can't you do this and why can't you be that so nipping yeah. it like right, getting it there is really important to encourage the child that everybody has their perspective even your parents you yeah. do have to respect them because those are the rules but however you are you yeah we are we are all of we, we are us um, but I'm saying it more as a metaphor for looking out into the world and thinking that things need to change, that we are responsible, like you were saying, that's a huge yeah. burden. Yeah, definitely. So I emancipated from that burden and uh, I'm still helping. Through, pla through plant-based. Well, I, I mean, that was one tool. That was one tool I used. <laughs> that was one tool I used. Um, I did microdose uh, for a few years because I used to believe I was um, an alcoholic. I used to have that in my identity. I don't know if you know NLP. Neuro linguistic programming. Yeah, it's similar to EFT, but not. But yes. So, and NLP, there's this model, and everything is just a model. So, every you just try on the model. Is is this coat feel good or not? You wear it, you stop. And uh, in the model, there's this uh, le levels, six levels of logical change from Diltz, Robert Diltz, and he starts with the base. So, if we go back here, the base is environment, where you are, your income, how you feel, people around you, city you live in, and usually that's where people complain. And in order to change that, you need to have a different action. So second level on top is action to be able to change environment. But the actions are determined by your capabilities. So what am I able to do so that I can do it and change the environment? Capabilities are determined by your beliefs and values. Do I believe I can learn another language to be able to learn the language and therefore get a raise at work and maybe move up because now I have, I'm bilingual? And, but if I don't believe I can learn another language or I don't have the... The, the value of, of growing, I'm going to stay stuck. On top of that, to change whatever, you, and higher up you move, you change everything underneath. So I am an alcoholic. I was in identity level. I was grabbing an action, which is drinking alcohol. I was bringing up to the identity and it changed everything beneath. Like I cannot control my drink. I did not value my, my, the, my health. So my capability 
did not change. And I kept on drinking, which kept on keeping me stuck in pain, chronic pain, and et cetera, and, and disappointment and whatever. And I was still joyful throughout all of this. Like there was still part of me that was, hey, everybody, I'm helping heal everybody. But I was drinking every day. And, and on top of that, to change identity, I am, which is super powerful, Wayne Dyer, right? I, I am statements, change your thoughts, change your life. You have to go higher up. So how do I change my identity? I had to have a mission. I had to go at the highest level of the logical changes, which is mission, purpose, reason for living. And that's when I connected with, I want to optimize my life splendidly. I want to optimize my four bodies, my physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual body. I want to share what I learned massively with everybody, and I want to have a blast every single day. Took a while because the higher you go, the longer it takes to change. So it took me about two years of hypnosis, auto hypnosis, affirmations, gratitude journaling, mindfulness meditation, and plant medicine. I incorporated that into a practice, a daily practice in my habits, my system of change. And uh, over the course of two years, I was able to change my identity to I respect what I put in my four bodies by observing what I want as my mission and is this useful towards the mission. And now I'm able to have a glass of wine with my wife. I'm able to drink a whole bottle. I'm able to be abstinent for a month or six. And I don't have a, can this day end? So I can make another, <laughs> take on the, another day, another day without alcohol. It's not about that anymore. It's about the mission. And it's not in my identity anymore. So when I have a drink, I'm not afraid that to fall off the wagon because it's not who I am anymore. Because there's no wagon to fall off of. There's no wagon. Like the Matrix, there's no spoon. There's no wagon. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that became Beautiful. sort of, uh, that became the, the, the bridges I crossed. And that's what I'm able to help other people do. Travel through the logical levels of change with gentle inquiry in the Socratic method, using all these different modalities and sharing the wisdom that I have inside and experience and helping the person next to me acquire their wisdom and their system of change, which is not mine. I'll be sharing mine and maybe they'll be taking some of it. Like I, I did this for a while. The Sri like Rantra, sacred, sacred geometry. This is an ancient technology that the, uh, the Hindu are using. And if you focus in the middle, which is all about the chakra system, and this here is a manifesting point. If you focus and meditate on the middle with your affirmations and you enter your heart space, you have images and thoughts and emotions that appear. And you could take that back into your real life off the cushion and you could apply it and notice what changes happen. And you can manifest inside of that. And if you, uh, with, a, with a, the kinesiological testing method, you know, with the arm. Mm -hmm. Or moves, self. Yeah. With, exactly with this. Not that one. No, that I one. didn't go like that. I went I, like that. I heard, you say, I heard you think that. I didn't even actually. I No, not you, the viewers, the viewers. You two are very bad. You two are very bad. Planting seeds that shouldn't be planted. <laughs> Wait a second. In the weeds we are now. We are this in is the creation. Weeds. It's all about creation. It's the orange. We're in the same level. Mean, you, know, you know what I'm talking about though, right? The muscle testing. Okay. Just want to be clear. <laughs> but it vibrates at a very high level. This image. And when you download it, it actually takes a huge amount of time because there's so much detail in it. So that's part of this. It's part of that download it like physically download it into your computer and then print it out or download it into your being and both. i guess both i guess both yeah thank you deborah thank you <laughs> at least but that's okay you can call no. me we're no. in, interchangeable at this point aren't said, we deborah because you asked a question but she answered that's why i was saying thank yeah. you for the answer so what did you say i said both <laughs> oh it is both it is yeah. both so that's why it takes a really long time yeah because every Lasting Got change it. takes a, takes time. I have a friend that uh, went uh, to Tulum and he did some uh, the Bufo experience. Like Mike Tyson, you know, I, I smoked this drug and now I'm, I see the light. <laughs> I don't know if you heard about Mike that. Mike Tyson's from my neck of the woods, East Harlem, but I didn't hear about the frog. So it's a venom of a Bufo frog and it's 5-MeO-DMT. It helps release the DMT of your pineal gland. It really upgrades your DNA. Like it's, it's powerful. You could measure changes in the body when it happens. And you can, of course, do this with deep meditation. Joe Dispenza does this all the time with his experiences. Uh, but some people, they want the fast track. And you take the fast track and in an hour, you attain an enlightenment and a bliss state. And you're like, oh, this is fantastic. But it takes you so much time to integrate it after. And then you wake up at night not, ab not able to sleep. And then you panic. 
And you're anxious. PTSD comes with it, maybe? Because, I mean, you're not supposed to jump up. It's a journey. It's all about the journey. And if you haven't acquired the discipline and practice and, and patience to reach it through this direction and you just jump up, you're the same. You're the same person with the higher awareness and consciousness, but you're not ready for it. Somebody like when it, like somebody winning the lottery who hasn't had that experience and had generation like earned their wealth, then all of a sudden it's gone. It disappears within a year. Like I don't know what percentage, but a huge percentage of people that win the lottery are poor within the year. I think it was ninety five percent I heard or something uh, within one year or two years or something. Yeah, it's, that's astronomical. Which because you think sad. Because rich people do not spend money; they invest it. But poor people spend every dollar, every cent. Like, I'm good. I got a million dollars. I'm going to buy the most beautiful mansion in the world. $695,000 later. And he has the upkeep. And the mansion is empty because you have no more money to buy for. for and furniture. then you can't sell it because it's a very specific market. <laughs> and then you haven't taken care of it. So now the weeds are growing everywhere. <laughs> and uh, so it's the poor mentality. You haven't changed on an identity level because you didn't go through every step. So I'm coaching him, mentoring him through the, the change process, which is a bit grueling. Every time he closes his eyes, he finds himself into the quantum field. He can't sleep anymore. Every time he closes his eyes, he's somewhere he doesn't want to be. And uh, he's vibrating. His, I, I believe his DNA is upgrading in some way. Who, Mike so, Tyson? Well, he, that's already done. But what my friend, that my friend that just did this. Oh, story. I thought you were coaching him. I'm like, saying you're a big, you really moved up quickly. <laughs> I would love to coach Mike Tyson. I love his, I love his. What uh, you wish for. I love his um, his quote where he says, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> <laughs> because that happens. Everybody has a plan and God is laughing because there's going to be a punch in the face that's going to put your plan awry and you're not allowing yourself to be in the flow. Like be water, be bamboo, you know, allow yourself to bend, allow yourself to take shape of whatever's happening. Be shapeless, yes. be formless. Okay, that's the mind seed right there. I didn't even get to ask you for your mind seed, but can we just, and say that that is a mind seed. Yeah, be Can formless. It's if like the month. it's like the listen to the whispers or get the two by four. That's isn't that your book? Well. That's that's my that's my chapter in book three. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, it's it, it's what I believe. And if you don't listen to those whispers, they get really loud yeah. and and vocal. And there's our two by four. You know, and uh, it's and they bruise and they hurt, and yeah. uh, you know we have to, like you say, work through it. That's work through it. You know, your your joyful, and your be, uh, kind of, and and also your flip your script, uh, Elise, kind of go hand in hand with my live life in wow. Yeah, and wow for me is wonder, openness, and wisdom, mm. and that's that's what I want to share with the world. And, you know, because I really believe we live in wow. I, I, there's so much wow that goes on. <laughs> if you open your eyes to it. Yeah. And, and that's, yeah. And that's what I, part of what I want to share with the world. And yeah. it's funny, you know, well, not funny, because there's no coincidence that we're all here in the same realm at this moment in time. And I'm so grateful for this talk, uh, sharing with you, Lise, sharing with you, Deborah. And I totally agree that we're vibing at the same level, same frequency. And uh, there's no, uh, there's no, this is serendipity right here. I like it. I'm, I'm like, yay, this is yeah. happening in real time. Okay. So how do we find Joyful Joey or Joey I, Joyful? I should jo see, I'm thinking Joey jo Joyful Joey, but that's okay. You could be Joey. Joey I'll Joyful. give you, I'll give you two of them. So the joeyjoyful.com is the easiest way. That's my internet site. I, I share a lot there, but I also have a links, L I I N K S dot C O slash joyful. I got it. Joey Joyful is perfectly fine. Joeyjoyful.com is everything there. Yeah. I mostly, I, I update it often and, uh, you're going to find uh, who I am, where I am, what I'm doing. I have a podcast. Are you on social media and stuff? J Kaz on Facebook. I have a clubhouse. I have two clubhouses and two podcasts. I can, I, I can never get enough. I have the Be Human Club and I have Joey Joyful Inc. And uh, if, you, if you look for Be Human Club on uh, all the platforms for, uh, for uh, podcasts, you're going to find me and Scott show up every day at 8 a.m. Eastern time talking about our inspiration. Mindful morning, uh, Monday mindset, uh, Tuesday training, uh, Wednesday inspiration, Thursday thrive day and Friday fun day. Wait, um, I just missed that. Sorry, Corey just was asking something. Say it again. Uh, be, human, be Human Club on Clubhouse and uh, podcast uh, platforms. You're going to find us and uh, we share a lot uh, of what we're doing with the Be Human Club. Because we believe that healthy dialogue is part of the solution. 
and we invite people to join the conversation. Sounds fun. I, you know, I've been invited to Clubhouse. I'm so in real time. Like, I don't even know how you all have the time to do all this. I hear you there. Like, I, I no slid into our interview. I'm like, what? you know, like two minutes to 11 because I'm like out there, you know, like doing all this yeah. stuff. I'm like, okay, here I am. Get ready. So, I appreciate everything that you all do. Thank you, Deborah, so much for sharing your precious time, yes. all these hours with, with us today. Joey, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'd love to stay connected, of course. Please. Yes. Um, please put your contact information in the comments below where we have shared this interview. Blue Talks Flip Your Script experience page on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube. Um, you can reach out to Corey because he's sharing it all over the place. Yeah. I want to thank everyone who watched us live today. And for those of you who have taken your time to come back and watch the replay, this is Elise Rothman with Flip Your Script Coaching. If you are ready to flip your script, okay, just flip your script so you can go out into the world and do and be and have anything and everything that you want, reach out to me, EliseRothman.com. Super easy. Um, flip your script with Elise on Facebook. And if you want to come and have a personal experience, check out Manatee Landing Retreat, which is one of our first Yum Life venture destinations here in Wikiwachi, Florida. It's ManatiLandingRetreat.com. And you can come and have a firsthand flip your script experience that you can take with you out into the world and, and share it, right? And grow some vibes that you love. Thank you guys so much. We will see you tomorrow. I believe Corey and I are hosting together. Corey's going to come. He's sandwiched the Monday and the Friday. So we're going to be able to uh, share the stage tomorrow as well. Again, thank you guys so much. Remember that the possibilities are endless and anything is possible as soon as you believe it is. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Elise. It's been great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>